Dominic Lawton can be wild. Welcome to the Bad Movie Cult. Hello and welcome to the Bad Movie Cult podcast, where each week we walk you through a film step by step, minute by minute, and by the end, we decide whether it's good enough or bad enough to be included in the Bad Movie Cult. And with me, helping me to decide this, is my podcasting wife, Mr. Kenby Wild. What a lovely introduction, Dom. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for being here. Well, thank you for asking me to be here. <laughs> be if, you, if you did. <laughs> yeah. can't remember. I don't remember ever asking you to be here. <laughs> <laughs> Story of my life. Ah, <laughs> oh, your wedding vows. <laughs> Yeah, is that what happened? <laughs> we are continuing April. Ooh, ooh, ah! Do you get it? Do you understand, listeners? Well, we've had a bit of controversy with people not understanding it because we've gone a bit clever, haven't we, with it? And mm. uh, if that is the case, we apologise. So sorry about that. The problem is, is that our audience is mainly Americans. They don't understand subtext. No. Or apes. Or, or apes, for that matter. <laughs> and neither do we, because this week we are covering the 1990, and this might be a first, two directors. Tom Logan and Hugh Park's film, Shackamar. It started as a study of human aggression. It led to experiments on primates. Something went wrong. Starring Christopher Atkins, two-time recipient of the National Association of Theatre Owners Star of the Year Award. First for Blue Lagoon, now for Shockma. Also starring Amanda Wiss of Silverado and Nightmare on Elm Street. Ari Myers from TV's Kate and Alley, featuring Roddy McDowell as Professor Sorensen. And Shockma. Shocking audiences everywhere. Shockma! What about that trailer? Have you have you actually listened to it or not? No. No? I fucking have. You will not believe the voice on the guy who does the trailer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the trailer. Um, last last week, obviously, we, we discussed the uh, Night of the Bloody Apes, which was said so many times in that trailer that uh, there's pretty much nothing else in it, to be honest. <laughs> oh, <No>, poor Julio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, you know, in case you were wondering what the night was, it was the one of the Bloody Apes, that one. This one is long portions of nothing. Uh, but the bloke reading it, he's absolutely brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> the effort he puts in, well, well played to that guy. Congratulations. <laughs> really enjoyed the trailer. The trailer itself is shit, and it's just clips from the film. But the uh, the narrator, full, full applause to him. Well, I hope you all enjoyed it. Before we get into the plot, we watched this years ago, way yep. before this podcast. Of course we did. So this is the first time viewing since you lent me the uh, DVD, which has a magnificent cover to it. It certainly does. Um, and I had totally forgotten the plot. I just remember <laughs> tiny monkey hands and monkey erections. That's all I remember from it. I didn't realise, but here's the plot anyway. A group of medical students, mm -hmm. these people are going to be scientists and doctors. Of course they are are attacked by an aggressive laboratory animal while competing in an after-hours role-playing game. <laughs> I could not remember that part of it. I was Well, sorry then. I could. God fucking <laughs> damn it. I've got a tagline for you. Go on. The world's most aggressive primate just got mad. Jesus Christ. That's pretty terrifying, isn't it? It is. Although they do point out that after man, not, not you know... If you include man in the primates, mm. that he's the second most aggressive primate. Wow. <laughs> you just got mad. I've got some key words for you, Yes, Ken. please, yes. B moving. Okay. B stand for baboon. <laughs> yes. Scientist. Yes, there are some. Animal attack. Many. 
baboon. Oh, baboon. Attacked by a monkey. Mm-hmm. Animal experimentation. <laughs> yes. And my favourite, science runs amok. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's a tagline right there, yes. isn't it? That's a fucking tagline. Oh, and another one I quite liked. Game Master. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> fucking Roddy McDowell, you idiot. <laughs> is it his first time? It might be. I think it, it is. It won't be his last. I He's got a it shitload it's, of him. It's uh, Rowdy, Roddy, Piper. No, no, McDowell. no. McDowell. I think Rowdy, Roddy, Piper, but with a bow tie. That's pretty much <laughs> Roddy McDowell. And perhaps a wasting disease. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, shall we crack into this, Ken? Or do you have any other thoughts? No, no, film? no. I've, I've always enjoyed this film. I, I really enjoy animal attack films. I don't know why. <laughs> I'd like to see people attacked by animals. Just cut that there. That's fine. <laughs> There's the quote. <laughs> Let's crack into the, the sheer horror where science meets baboons. <laughs> Shakma. I suppose we're already really fucked April up because this isn't an... Well, there is apes in it. There are chimpanzees. So that's how we're sliding this film in. No, I thought it was a, a, an ape. I thought baboon was an ape. Uh, I didn't realise it had a fucking tail, even though I watched it. Yeah. He's <laughs> it got two tails. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a ta- a tail, a two tails of a baboon. Yeah. The only one of them you want to pull on. Or maybe neither. I don't think you want to pull on either of them. No. It's about, what bloody world's most aggressive primate? Second. <laughs> you want to be pulling on its tails. <laughs> well, we open the film. We're panning up to the, the outside of a building and a title card. It's a great title, isn't it? It's I really very like good. That. I like that. That's what we went for, isn't it? For Christmas for our two. Yes. Yes. Shakma! Lovely. And then, straight into surgery, which I think happened the last fucking one we watched. Just surgery straight in, aren't we? We weren't straight into surgery. I know, it was so. wrestling, wasn't it, sorry, in the last it, yes. one? It's a bit similar. I know yeah. that, yeah. You yeah. get confused, don't you, when you th- you think you go into the wrestling, but you actually have a serious operation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's when I turned up for my, uh, my operation in a luchador mask <laughs> <laughs> and a cape. <laughs> That's why you ended up having a baboon's tail put into you. <laughs> yes. We see Roddy McDowell. He's wearing like um, a painter's mask. So, it, you know, it's not actually a surgical mask what anyone's wearing here. It's like uh, what you wear when you're spray painting. Oh, right. Or oh, like when, you, when you're when frightened of the COVID. Yes. That kind of thing. It kind of is, yeah. yeah. But here he is. He's fucking doing some surgery. He got some students looking on. There's a sort of little bloody hole, isn't there? There is, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, one of my favourite types of hole. <laughs> oh dear. Um, and I don't really know what's going on. Are they injecting something into the th- brain of something? I, I don't know. It's some sort of like I think he's getting a, a microchip. A microchip. It's got a bloody microchip. And then we got some student starts asking Roddy McDowell something about a game, some sort of game that's going on. Yeah, I mean, brain surgery is no game. It's not the time, not the place. Well, I mean, Roddy McDowell shuts that shit down quick smart. Exactly. He's, at... he's exactly on the same page as me there. Now's not the time, you anus, <laughs> is what he says. <laughs> you baboons, anus. And this is where we cut to the, the hero. More on those later. <laughs> we cut to the hero of the film, Sam. Sam looks a little bit like uh, Luke Skywalker. Yeah, I guess he kind of does, yeah. Yeah, wait, oh, and obviously, as as the trailer mentioned, very successful at this time. Congratulations to him. <laughs> Remember, yeah, you've probably seen him in other things, such as nothing whatsoever, <laughs> unless you go out of your way to track him down. Yeah, I only know two people in this film. Yeah, um, he was in, uh, I think it was Blue Lagoon. Dirty bastard. Who's in that? Is that uh, Daryl Hannah? No, that's Splash. Oh, that's it, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Close though. <laughs> no, I think That's it was where that science one. runs a muck with a mermaid. <laughs> is, that, is that the one where Tom, Tom Hanks wants to have sex with a fish? Tom Hanks wants to shag a fish. Yeah, yeah. God's sake. Bloody Hanks. Yeah, that was when he was fun, wasn't it? Yeah, fun, fun Hanks. Fun Hanks, that was, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, we meet Sam. He's going into, um, into a room. We meet Bradley, henceforth known as Sir Bradley. Oh, yeah, yeah. He was a fucking ridiculous bloke, wasn't he? Yeah. Sir Bradley, I don't know if he's just unable to speak without being stupid. Marble mouth, isn't he? Yeah, everything he says sounds like he's putting on a stupid voice. Mm. And you just kind of think, why? Why at all times? He's sitting next to the biggest walkie-talkies you'll see this side of walkie-talkie land. 
Oh, that's clever. That's a good one, Tom. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's one for the Americans. They love walkie-talkie land. 10-4. 10-4, good buddy. 10-4, read you loud and clear, rubber dick. <laughs> Yeah, they're all set to different frequencies, these walkie-talkies, ready for the game later. It's an exciting-sounding game, isn't it? This Everyone's <laughs> talking about it. They've got walkie-talkies. They say, yeah, the size of Vietnam field phones. They've got oh, it's all kinds of crazy going on. It's set to different frequencies, so they can't speak to each other. They can only speak to the game master. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. <laughs> uh, Sam says Bradley's going to lose, and Bradley says, I have never lost anything in my life. <laughs> Even my virginity. (laughs) (laughs) And Sam, of course, he's lost everything. That's what he says, and he looks away. (laughs) Including his family. And Bradley's like, yes, that makes sense. And he says, yes, but you've never played in a real building before. You've been playing in imaginary buildings all your life, Sir Bradley. You've been playing in walkie-talkie land, Sir Bradley. (laughs) (laughs) He's a guilty as charged, Samuel. Sir Bradley. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty fucking tense, isn't it? Straight in. Yeah, it's very, very tense. What on earth's going to happen? And it, it, it almost turns into Tron at this point because we get we get a look at the PC that they're going to be using <laughs> as a map. <laughs> Fuck me! It's cutting edge stuff, isn't I it? I paused the fucking film, Ken, and had a look, and I had no idea what the fuck I was looking at. <laughs> what the fuck's that? Yes, it's uh, it's incredible. It's because you don't understand the computer world, do you? No, no. only no walkie-talkie land. Yeah, exactly. You don't know the computer world. No. <laughs> no, these do. They no. know both. Do you mean PC world? <laughs> <laughs> the shop. Yeah, there's a sale on. <laughs> Get there now. <laughs> we find out that they're all going to be having trackers. They're going to be hunted down like dogs. <laughs> yeah, which is good, isn't it? Yeah. It's so the game master. The game master. Dun, 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 dun. Can track their progress through the building, and Bradley says, "This will be the best game ever." <laughs> oh, hopeful, Sir Bradley. <laughs> Sir fucking Bradley. Sir Bradley the hopeful. He yes. was called in this film. <laughs> Bravely brave, Sir Bradley. <laughs> anyway, back to fucking the operation centre. What's it called? It's not the operation centre, is it? That's theater. Like... The operation Ooh. theater. Ooh. <laughs> yes, the theatre. <laughs> yes. Roddy McDowell's holding a skull and he's wearing a Jacobean ruff. <laughs> uh, Richard, this is the guy who's like, hey, hey, um, hey, Professor, are you looking forward to the game later? He's now also still going on about what an amazing professor you are. The way you injected that ape's brain was the best <laughs> I've ever seen. And I've seen three other times that has happened, and they've been shit. Yeah, I've seen some really shit injections. I've been seeing science run amok in the past, but that was textbook. <laughs> Congratulations, Dr. Professor Roddy McDowell Sorensen, Sorensen, Game Master. What? Yes. Hey? You Professor Game Master, please. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Richard, he wants to know about joining the game tonight. And prof- uh, Do we call him Roddy McDowell or should we call him Sorensen? Let's call him Sorensen. Yeah, Sorensen, he tells him that he's going to have to ask Sam, since it's Sam's game and Sam's game's only. <laughs> only Sam can permit. The Game Master rules. It's amazing, isn't it? <laughs> is, this, is, this, is this what like geeks do? I hope not. I can't. I don't know because I've seen it when, like, when they sit around a table and play it, like the Dungeons and Dragons, that kind of shit. Yeah, never really understood the appeal. No, not going to tell you you should do things like more interesting with your life. That's what you want to do. Crack on, but I don't fucking get any of this. No, I don't understand the appeal of this. I mean, we're saying this as two guys who spend most of their time watching terrible films. Yeah, do something more, you know, more productive. <laughs> yeah, like watch Shackmar. For the, this is like Shackmar. the third time I've seen this film. <laughs> it's science runs amok. Yeah, but uh, I, I don't understand the appeal of it. Yeah. I don't get any of it. Yeah. I, I, I say I've seen it many, many times elsewhere and other stuff, and I've just always thought I don't know whether they're that are they heightening how boring it is, like for non-players. Therefore, like sort of laughing at it, or is it a true representation of it? And it actually is just this that's happening. I really hope it isn't. No, I, I don't, but I don't know. So you know, I'm not, I'm not saying that you shouldn't be doing it. I'm just asking the question. Yeah. But this looks fucking awful. Yeah. So you know, 
just need just need a heads up. Is this really what what would happen? Yeah. Uh, fun fact: me and my girlfriend at the time, uh, she was living with a guy who was very much into the D and D land. And <laughs> mm-hmm. and um, we were very drunk once we came back to the house and we sort of said, oh, no, yeah, we'll definitely, we'll, let's sort of a, a night out where we, or a night in, where we play Dungeons and Dragons with you. And then we woke up sober the next day like, what the hell have we done? <clears throat> uh, but we never did play it in the end. That's a shame. Yeah. He's probably still dressed up waiting in his little <laughs> his little cave. Isn't he waiting for you to join him? Oh, you're going to say his little hat? <laughs> Oh, of course he's hat. got his hat on, hasn't he? Yeah. And his robes. <laughs> See, I don't know. I don't know what goes on. You know what? I, I've had a week off. So we're peeling back the curtain here in the podcast. I've just had a week off from work. And on Monday, I went to the pub on my own to have a drink. You nice, know. isn't it? That? And uh, I went out to the beer garden. It's quite nice weather. In, in between it pissing it down, I went, oh, I'm going to sit out in the beer garden. When I walked out... There was a group of lads on a table right by the door, not in the sunshine, of course, playing some sort of card game, which was looked similar to Dungeons, but it had its own mat, and oh, I didn't understand what Jesus. the fuck it was. I sort of glanced, every time I walked in to get another beer, I had a little look. They were very, very into it, no. and uh, I had no idea what the fuck that was. I don't think it was Dungeons & Dragons. I don't think you have cards. I think you just have your own mind and a piece of paper. That's the beauty of it. <laughs> That's the beauty of it. You don't have to go to Walkie Talkie Land to play Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> I'll remember that. Mm. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway, let's get on with this. So yeah, Richard's like the arse kisser. He wants to be in with Sorensen for some reason. I don't really know why. Uh, one of the students says, "Why would if if you could take your lips off Professor Sorensen's anus for one minute, please?" <laughs> anyway, cut back to Sam. He's in another lab. He's uh, fucking about with a rat. He's talking to his girlfriend, Tracy. You may know her as Tina. Tina. From Nightmare on Elm Street. So Roddy McDowell and Tina is the only two I know from this. Yep. That'll do, though, won't it? Uh, they're working long hours. He starts saying some bollocks about, if you're my girlfriend, you've got to make my meals, mend my socks, wipe my arse, and have my children. And tickle my dick. Ticklemydick.com. One of Ken's. <laughs> have a little look at that. <laughs> That's the tagline for the <laughs> for the website. <laughs> Yeah, got the t-shirts available. And she says, well, I'll be too busy working at the engineering firm I've started. And I'll start that with your money. Ha, ha, ha. And Ken just threw his fucking <laughs> remote at the screen at that. And then the rat jumps on her shoulder and Sam fucking laughs his dick off. Yeah. And then she just grabs it, squeezes it to death. Yeah. Single-handedly just pops. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she has a right old laugh about it. He says that this rat attacks feminists on command because it's feminist to want your own <laughs> business. <laughs> it was the early 90s. In fact, we just got into the 90s at this time. Exactly. It was feminist to have your own hopes and dreams at that point. Bloody women. <laughs> now look where we are. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, whatever that means. Exactly. Uh, cut to Richard. And the guy who's making fun of him, this guy turns out to be called Gary. Hello, Gary. Gary. There's only two black guys called Gary, this guy and Gary Coleman. <laughs> Not to be confused with each other. Not on this occasion, no. He's a bit taller, isn't he? What are you talking about, Kenneth? Is that what he says? <laughs> yeah, is that? I think that is I the, think it is, isn't it? Yeah, I from remember different that. strokes. That was it, yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about, Kenneth? <laughs> yeah. I think that was it, what, yeah. it. what is it you're saying, Kenneth? <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, can you repeat that, Kenneth? That was his catchphrase, it wasn't was, it? Yeah, he was classic, wasn't it? Everyone liked him. Yeah, Will Smith was in that, wasn't he? I think he was. Yeah. Yep. And Bill Cosby. Anyway, cut to a gurney covered <laughs> Shaq. This is the first sign of the puppet that they use for the whole film of Shaq Mar just fucking dead on a gurney. <laughs> <laughs> There's something so funny about this, this, just a baboon, just lifeless on a gurney. I don't understand why I'm that's funny. I'm not sure there is. I'm not <laughs> sure there is. Just something it looks funny so about it. so stupid, the way it's underneath the fucking um, sheet with his, his hand poking out. <laughs> <laughs> At least they use an actual puppet, not like Bloody Apes, was just a guy in a fucking suit. And this is the first time they say the name of the film out loud, and they pronounce it weird. Not like I remember it. They pronounce it Shockmar. Uh, no, well, who gives a fuck? It's bloody Shakmar, isn't it? <laughs> it gives a fuck out. Ken, they say Ken's it. just fucking. He, Ken's at his most blase in this episode. He doesn't give a fuck about anything or anyone. <laughs> give a fuck how they say Shakmar. He doesn't give a fuck about anything in this film. <laughs> Pretty much, though, to be honest. <laughs> I love this film. 
I think it's fucking brilliant. But at the same time, there's a lot that I couldn't give a fuck about. There is a lot. Sam wants to know, what the hell have you done to my goddamn baboon? Yeah, because it attacks, so doesn't it? It goes fucking first on attack. Mm. Shakmar's attacking before we've even like got to know his name. G- Gary's the man who does all the voices. He's the funny, he's the comic relief in this film. When he's not being an absolute dickhead. Oh, I don't think he is, but carry on. <laughs> and he does some kind of weird impression of... Frank, Frankenstein or something? I think he's he's trying to be like uh, the guy from Police Academy, isn't he? The bologna sandwich? Uh, no, uh, Hightower. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Bobcat Goldthwait. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. That's him, yeah. Is as, that how he speaks? As Hightower. <laughs> that was Arnie trying to be <laughs> Bobcat Goldthwait, wasn't it? <laughs> that was each of them doing an impression of the other. <laughs> that's Arnie doing an impression of someone he's never heard or met before. <laughs> <laughs> what we've had there, a little throwback to Dom's regular spot of uh, who the fuck was that? <laughs> Where Dom does an impression and uh, <laughs> and you all have to try and guess what the bloody hell he's doing. <laughs> yeah, you may remember this turned up a few episodes ago uh, and I think he thought maybe it was just a one-off, but no. <laughs> he's giving you a clue by telling you as well there. <laughs> so, you know, don't, have, don't feel you have to join in. <laughs> I'm sorry, I burped. <laughs> that was my Bobcat Gold. That play. was a Chewbacca burping. <laughs> <laughs> That's who that was. <laughs> anyway, yeah, he does a voice anyway, Gary. Much better than I do. And um, <laughs> Don't be too hard on yourself. <laughs> Gary Bass says, oh, I've just injected something into the brain of this baboon. Well, That's funny, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so who's this poor fella? Yeah, it's Shockma. Shockma? What did you guys do? We've injected corocotropin in his brain. Gross. No, it's actually quite fascinating. We've been working on a stable variation of corocotropin. Stable? Well, it usually inhibits aggression, but um, sometimes it has the opposite effect. So why use this poor monkey? Baboon. Well, they're the most aggressive primate. Besides man. Basically, Richard is just a unlikable twat and turns to Tracy the only woman in the fucking thing and tries to explain it to her like this shot usually uh, inhibits aggression but in some cases it increases it (laughs) like what I think he's telling us really isn't he she's got to already know that exactly and he says uh, actually Shakmar's a baboon and because Tracy calls him a monkey he's like no he's actually a baboon he's like it's the same fucking thing he's a monkey well see the confusion see the apes monkeys baboons you know fuck it it's all the same, isn't it? And then he carries on explaining about baboons and how they're the most aggressive primate. And then Ken corrects him. Ken appears in the film yeah, and no. corrects him. Apart from man. Yeah. And then I just vanish back in under the covers. I was uh, one of the uh, cadavers. <laughs> <You> just <laughs> I just up. sit up and say, apart from man. You just see where his face is. <laughs> like lifts the sheet. <laughs> where he <laughs> Winks at the camera. And then I'm back down. Yeah. And Sam, Sam's very upset because he's Shakmar's best mate. Yes, that's nice, isn't it? Yeah, they've been on holiday together. <laughs> I saw the photos, yeah. <laughs> Just on the beach with fucking... With a baboon. <laughs> <laughs> a roller coaster being attacked by a baboon now <laughs> as he goes loop the loop. All of his holiday <laughs> pictures of him just being attacked by the, Shakmar. The baboon raking his face with his claws. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the good old days. That's when you could take a baboon holiday. That is true, yeah, yeah. The, the early days, the you 90s. Know, before the health and safety went mad. Yeah. And you couldn't do anything. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember that, viewers or listeners, when you could take a baboon on holiday? Oh, those were the days, weren't they? <laughs> <laughs> Crying out for those days to come back. Uh, Shakmar, quick as a flash, springs up, starts attacking. Who's it attacking? I can't even remember who it attacks. Richard. It's Scratch- Richard. Is it Scratch? Oh, yeah, is it D- Richard? Dicky Rich. Yeah, he scratches him on the arm. Tracy throws Sam his weapon of choice, which is a fucking um, needle on a stick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, more on that later. Yeah, and uh, injects Shakmar, and Shakmar goes sleepy go bye bye time. Shakmar! Shakmar! Sorensen runs into the room saying, What the. Blue hell is going on, and oh, Richard God. says, I didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> like the start of um, Kickboxer. Yeah. Or Blood Sport. I Blood Sport. Remember. Blood Sport, yeah. I didn't do it. He did it. <laughs> Fucking great, that kid. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell why they picked him. Sorensen tells him, tells her Sam to inject Shakmar with 200 more cc's of whatever 
they injected well, him I've with. I've written it down, Dom. Oh, go on. I do enjoy writing this sort of shit down. Well, he's distracted, though, isn't he, as he's doing it? Mm. So he's, he's still talking about the game, Richard. He's fucking been attacked. He's been attacked by a baboon. But he's still intent on joining this fucking mind-numbingly boring and shit game that he keeps hearing about. Which, in credit to him, once he starts playing it, he does acknowledge this is fucking boring. <laughs> you better not alienate our fucking fan base again, <laughs> Ken. Also, help me, God, I'll knock you to the ground. Well, I'm hoping not to. I'm hoping not to. You know, that's why I put the disclaimer out that if that's what you want to do, get on with it. And that's what I want to do. So, you know, you get on with that. Mm. But no, it's so whilst he's being distracted, Sam, and instead of injecting him with uh, phenothiazine, he picks up phenocyclophetamine. Good God. I know. Why would you even keep those two next to each other? It's an insane move by the laboratory department. Yeah. It seems like counterproductive. Well, it's definitely not what we wanted here. Yeah. Perhaps worst case Sicario. <laughs> <laughs> More on that later. Yes. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, Sam says that uh, if we inject 200 cc's of this shit into Shakmar, he's going to fucking die because he's a tiny little baboon. <laughs> he is only little, isn't he? He is a little. In a bit at times, he looks very little. He does. And then at other times, he looks fucking massive. Yeah, he looks very fucking scary, and sometimes he looks very cute. Yeah. Especially when he has his little uh, stuffed... Animal toy next to him. I like him when he's on his little two legs. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> looking like a little kid. Yeah, he does. Yeah, his little skinny oh. legs. Uh, Sorensen says he's not fucking happy about it. Tells Sam to just inject the little shit. Inject him. Fucking kill him. That's what he says. He says just fucking kill the baboon. He says, "Don't you see, Sam? I've injected the brain of this baboon. He'll never be the same again." I don't know why I did it in the first place. <laughs> I'm not even sure what we're supposed to be doing in this laboratory. Aren't we just here for a game? <laughs> so, but I've been injecting baboons. Quick cut to the hallway. Gary, he's chatting to some girl. Never see her again. And uh, I think this scene's only in so we can see that the alarms are being shut off. For some reason, the professor who's in charge of this decides to shut off not just the alarms, the fire alarm, literally anything <laughs> that could raise awareness <laughs> if something goes wrong is being shut off now. Back to the lab. Yes, um, it, uh, Sam's been told he's got to lose this sensitive side if he's ever going to be a doctor. Yeah. Which means kill your fucking friend, baboon. Yeah. Kill you, him. You can't have empathy or feelings if you're going to be a doctor. And I actually think that's perhaps the opposite of being a doctor, isn't it? Not giving a fuck about anyone you deal with. Yeah. <laughs> Surely that's not what a doctor is. Yeah, if a doctor treated their patients with the same regard you've treated this episode so far, Ken, I'd be very <laughs> upset. <laughs> It's why I'm not a doctor anymore. I was. Yeah. It didn't end well for anyone. <laughs> Certainly not the baboons I kept hanging around the place. <laughs> you know, like a comfort baboon. You know, when he's got a little kid being brought in and you just give him a baboon to play just with. Just throw it into the room and shut the door behind <laughs> just you. Drop kick a baboon in. Just to observe what would happen. You could though back in the day. Those were the days. That's why I got struck up. Well, that's why I left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what happened. Yeah, I decided it wasn't for me. Yeah, after the, the courts. That's the problem with Ken. He thinks he can treat all of life's problems with drop kicking a baboon <laughs> into a room, and that's it. And that doesn't happen, Ken. You can't do it well, anymore. Not these days, as you say, but back then, that used to solve a lot of stuff. That's true. I mean, <laughs> that used to be a very that, that was a problem solver. Yeah. Look at the conflict that it could have saved in this day and age. Yeah. Yeah. Got Putin out there. We got a baboon thrown in the room with him. Yeah. Good luck. Exactly. And if he wins, fair play to him. He deserves everything he gets. Yeah. <laughs> I always thought that about my parents when they get to a certain age. Just wheel them out into the woods and just leave them to it. Oh, I thought you meant just throw a baboon into their or bedroom. A, well, that's the next option <laughs> when they come back. Is it? Dep like a... Depends how far away the woods are, doesn't it? Yeah. You don't go that far. The monkey forest. That's where I'm going to put them. <laughs> Best of both worlds. <laughs> I'm sure they just have baboons running around in there, don't they? Uh, Barbary macaques. What the hell did you just call me? <laughs> oh, is that, that's the Beach Boys song, isn't it? That was it, yeah. Ba 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 bree macaques. That's it. It's always playing at that place. <laughs> anyway, cut to Tina. No, not Tina. Tina. Tracy. She's patching up Richard's arm. He could do that himself. He's a fucking trainee doctor. He is. So and he's a grown arm, man. It? Yeah. It's his arm, isn't it? And uh, Sam, he's, um, he's about to kill Shaq Ma. Richard distracts him because he's a dickhead. And as you said, he, he injects him with the wrong shit. 
Let's see he's got right shit, wrong shit next to each other. Yeah. He takes wrong shit. And uh, that's when Sorensen says, Richard, now that we've mutilated you with the baboon, <laughs> let, you can join our game. Yes, that's all part of the uh, onboarding process. But Sam's like, oh, but we've, all, we've already got our players. I don't know where Richard fits in all of this. Like a little... This is our hero, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. This is the least likely, most fucking whiny hero since... Um, <laughs> well, there's been a few, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking, which one should I pick? And I nearly picked one we haven't even covered yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck no. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> since little Kenneth in Troll 2. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Uh, Tracy suggests that he maybe could play Nemesis. Oh, that's <laughs> terrifying, isn't it? The name he's given. Just to just to back just just to step away from the film. I'm watching this at the minute. Like, what the fuck are all these people talking? <laughs> what the hell are you talking? What's Nemesis? What are, what are these adults talking about? Yeah. Nemesis, Ken. He's an he's an ugly little demon. <laughs> he lurks in the caves. What caves? They're in a hospital. What? What? Well, the caves, Ken, are just the labs with the lights turned off. Ooh. They're the caves. Oh, goodness. But he's also the goddess of vengeance. Oh, Jesus. This is terrifying stuff. It really is, What does is, that mean? It? I don't fucking know, do I? <laughs> <laughs> Basically, the whole point of the game is they've got to rescue the princess from the tower. Some princess gagging for it as she appears. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Richard says, oh, yeah, I'll definitely play. And then Sam says, um, why don't you go and help uh, the professor set up? And he's like, I will indeed. He loves that. He loves the fact that he can <laughs> oh, help yes. the professor. Jesus Christ. Uh, Sam then um, just stares at Shakmar for a little bit. His little hand moves. Oh, my. His little hand, a little twitch. Oh, poor Shakmar. Oh, Shakmar, why? He's got a little, little plush um, stuffed animal, Shakmar. A little yes, mate. Yeah, a little chimp. He's a little, little chimp animal, isn't it? He's a little toy to calm him down when he's furiously smashing the shit up. Yeah. Richard will shack Ma to the um, oven anyway. <laughs> <laughs> to the uh, dead baboon enclosure. Yeah. <laughs> and he fills out the um, clipboard and uh, he actually puts the death as man. The reason for death, man. Laughs, <sighs> laughs to himself. Yeah. That's not nice, is it? But true. And uh, we also see the little hand move. It's a beautiful moment, isn't it? Yeah. It sort of suggests that he's not dead. Know what I mean? I think he is dead. Oh, right. Okay. Sorry. No, it doesn't then. No. no. It suggests that he's definitely dead. It's a twitch of the death nerve. Oh, it happens. Uh, Sorensen walks in says, what the fuck are you doing, Richard? <laughs> burn this fucking baboon. <laughs> <laughs> or so help me God, I'll burn you. <laughs> Richard says, but you said that you wanted this baboon cremated. It's like, no, he didn't. He never said that. Nobody said that. No, only you said that. Me? Yeah. Oh. Richard gets short shrift from the professor, and he says, no, I want to do a necropsy mm -hmm. on the baboon. On the baboon. And just leave him there. Fucks off. Richard does see the little hand move and has a little look and thinks, I'm sure the baboon's hand moved. But then he thinks, ah, fuck it, and walks off. If only he'd have said that out loud. Somebody may have done something about it. Could have actioned it. He has a little look through the window, doesn't he, for ages at the baboon and then walks off. Yeah, he's not fucking doing anything, is he? Someone taps him on the back. It's a girl called Laura. Oh, hello. And that's his girlfriend. And he's like, I would love to go and have sex with you, but I'm going to go and play a fucking Dungeons and Dragons <laughs> game with my <laughs> professor all night. With my professor and a group of people I don't like, and they don't like me. Yeah. <laughs> and they've made that very, very clear in the I opening minutes. I have no minutes. part in the game. <laughs> in the opening minutes of this film, they have told me to my face they don't want me to play. <laughs> and they all hate me. However, I'm going to go and play anyhow. I don't know anything about the game or the rules, uh, but I'm going to do that instead of going off, having a couple of beers and having some sex. <laughs> Although when they did tell me, I thought it was fucking boring, <laughs> but I'm still going to play, so you can fuck off. Yeah, so get out of here. He says, I would love nothing more than to go back to your place and engage in some primitive mating rituals. That's nice. Nice of her to have that offered. <laughs> primitive. <laughs> Using sticks and... <laughs> And buttocks. Sticks no and doubt. buttocks. <laughs> one of our band names. <laughs> Which one were you? I was Sticks, of course. Of course, yeah. 
I'm always buttocks. You're damn right you are. <laughs> uh, elevator opens. Richard's little sister, Kim. She turns up. She's the princess that you were talking about. Is that his sister? That's his sister, yeah. Fucking hell, I didn't notice that. I've seen this loads of times, this film. I've never fucking known it was his sister. Well, she's too busy fucking masturbating over Sam, isn't she? <laughs> well, for you yeah. to notice that. Yeah, that's what I was focusing on. Yeah. And she has agreed, Ken. Listen to this. Mm-hmm. She has agreed to go and sit in a room all night mm-hmm. so someone can rescue her by saying a code word to her. Mm-hmm. She's willing to sit all <laughs> night in the fucking staff room. The only thing more ridiculous than that would be if she's actually going to dress up like a fucking princess <laughs> to do this. <laughs> That's the only thing that would make this more fucking pointless. Yeah. Can I just ask, what's the game? <laughs> Um, well, what it is, is you go from place to place and you read a clue and then Roddy McDowell will say yes or no and then you either stand still for the rest of the night or look in a different room. I get that, but what's the game? No, that is it though, isn't it? Fuck me. Sam, uh, she she actually apologises. I'm so sorry I let my brother find out about this game. So she was invited to take part. Why don't you turn <laughs> up for a few hours, dress yourself up and sit in a fucking room, but don't tell your brother who we work with. How, does, how do they know her? Who knows? How do they even fucking know her? She's like two years younger than everybody else. Yeah. So, you know, what what the fuck? I anyway, think... she's in. She loves the idea of it. I think, of course, she's hoping to be rescued by Sam. Who she's infatuated with. Well, he says, is it okay with your parents that you're here? I'm like, how fucking old is she, Sam? And why are you fucking flirting with her then if she's so young that you've she's had to ask her parents if she can be there? And you're currently in a relationship with Tina from Nightmare on Elm Street. What's that all about, Sam? Yeah. So what are you even doing, you, you f- dirty dog? You wouldn't fuck about with this princess if you had Tina from Nightmare on Elm Street, though, to be fair. Don't know. Don't know. <laughs> also, my note is uh, she walks like she shit herself. This princess, exactly, pretty sexy, right? Yeah, there's not many princesses <laughs> that do that. Princess shit herself. Princess shits a lot. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, yeah. She walks into a classroom. Sam... Shot dead Im- immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Instantly ravaged by a fucking baboon. <laughs> No, she doesn't. No, not yet, no. In fact, there's no fucking sign of any ravaging of any baboons going on so far. I was making count of, we're 25 minutes into this film, <laughs> and all I've heard about is this fucking game. Can't wait till we start it. Yeah. yeah. There's a chimpanzee watching Richard and his girlfriend uh, kiss. Yeah, pulling his little pud. He is. Yeah. Little chimpanzee wank, which yeah. is one of our, <laughs> our albums. Yeah, Sticks and Buttocks presents. <laughs> Chimpanzee wank. <laughs> wasn't as popular as we hoped. No, well, it was very niche, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, Sam and Kim, so Kim's the, the sister, they walk in on them two kissing. And uh, Sam's like, hey, hey, I found this attractive young woman outside. He's like, she's how old is she, Sam? Stop fucking about now. <laughs> I can't believe you're related to her because you're an absolute cunt. Yeah, we all fucking hate you. (laughs) He's like, I can't wait to play this game with you guys. (laughs) Oh, you guys. And then he starts speaking about the game and I fucking nearly went slipped into a coma listening to him talk about it. And he's got to set things up. Also, like he's just been invited to the game, but he has to do everything. That's why they've invited him. Just to get him to do all this shit because they can't be bothered. Even though when's this game supposed to have started? Can't just be all fucking night. And uh, Richard's missus, this is the first he's hearing, she's hearing about the game and she's very unhappy that that's what he's doing instead of having sex with her. Rightly so, to be honest. If you've got any yeah. priorities, you've got to be looking at those and just think, oh, fuck these off. Yeah. No chance. Playing a little game with my sister and my colleagues. Yeah, yeah, my little sister. I'm going to have to rescue my little sister from the staff room. I'm sorry I can't have sex with you tonight. <laughs> you know, in case of nemesis. <laughs> I'm nemesis. <laughs> fear me. <laughs> Go on, fear me. Richard, <laughs> stop it. But Richard does say to her, oh, it's only be a couple of hours, and Sam's like, I don't know, when, when the mood takes us, it can take all night. Imagine that. How fucking dull that'd have been. They're only going to. It's like surely there's a finite 
amount of rooms they can go into, so it can't take them all fucking night. Yeah, because they've only got like three keys each, yeah, like to go into a certain yeah, room. It's just fucking rubbish, isn't it? When they run out of keys, then if they could only go in three rooms, well, they just fucking stand there. They can't yeah. go in, they're just wandering the corridors all night. No, 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 they just sit down. <laughs> fucking Jesus. <laughs> sit on the floor and just sing. Does anyone understand this game? <laughs> Email us in badmoviecultgmail.com. What's the fucking game in Shakmar? Yeah. Because I don't fucking understand it. Anyway, so Laura fucks off. She's not happy. Okay, you go and do that instead. Richard says to Sam, Oh, why did you wind up my girlfriend? I'm going to have to go and follow her now. Sam and Kim laugh. They high-five each other, and then Sam gets his dick out. (laughs) She just twangs it. Yeah. Oh, sorry, no. Sam gets his chimpanzee out. Oh, sorry. Okay. The building's locked up tight. Nobody gets out until we have a rescue princess and a defeated demon. Our bestie's out. Oh, Brad... I've given each one of the homing devices an identity of its own, so just for fun, let's try and figure out which character you are, huh? Oh, great. Huh. All right, well, go down to the second floor as soon as you're ready. Oh, uh, uh, your starting location's on the scrolls inside. Yeah, I'll start contacting you in a few minutes. Let the game begin. Yeah, we, f- we fade out and then we fade back in. Uh, with animal noises, the outside of the um, building. It sounds like the animals are running amok. I think it's supposed to denote that Shakmar's killing the animals because you see blood spatter on one of the windows. Terrifying though, isn't it? Nice, horrible noises. Cut to Kim and Tracy. They're playing cards. They're playing Go Fish. Oh, yes. Sam wanders in. And oh, have you seen Richard? Nope. And pulls out his walkie-talkie. The biggest walkie-talkie <laughs> you'll ever see in your life. The antenna on it's as big as he is. And rightly so. Otherwise, they wouldn't be able to uh, to communicate, would they, during the game? Did you ever have a walkie-talkie? Yeah, not like that, though. Not that fucking big. No? I had a walkie-talkie, and um, it was probably good for a bit. And I, I like, not, not, not you know, good for a bit of distance. Not that fucking distance. Mm. Not anywhere in the in a, like a hospital, probably. Mm. I bought one not too long ago. Well, when I was an adult, I bought a walkie-talkie set. Mm. just for fun and um i took it with me and i went to the pub and um i got a message come through on it because i was just like gonna fuck around just show just open my coat and just have a walkie talkie in there that was just gonna be like a, a, a a visual joke to my friend but i actually got a message on it and i picked it up and i was just like hello over and it was just like just calling in over and it was uh it was my dad who'd got the other one and driven <laughs> to the pub and was sat in the car park speaking to me <laughs> through the walkie-talkie. <laughs> and he's just parked outside on the walkie-talkie just like that. Kenneth, come in. Come in, over. <laughs> I was like, what the bloody hell? <laughs> yeah, and it was him. So, yeah, so, I mean, walkie-talkies are fun. Yeah, very much so. Well, it but, is. Uh, it but... is when your dad's got the other one. It sounds like. <laughs> but yeah, there were only kids walkie talkies, just just for a visual joke. So I thought it'd be quite amusing. But yeah, scared the shit out of me that bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, still funny. Your dad is funny. When I first met Ken's dad, fun fun story. He kicked me in the fucking face. <laughs> <laughs> that is fun, isn't it? Yeah, I like yeah that. he was always doing that. <laughs> Yeah, no context to that story. Nope. It just did happen. It did happen. That actually did happen. He gives them the scrolls. <laughs> <laughs> he gives them the homing beacons as well. <laughs> the scrolls. And tells them, this is where you start. And he says, oh, and for fun, I've assigned you identities to your trackers and you're going to have to figure out what your characters are. Oh, that's fun, isn't it? Yeah, that's fun, yeah. Why don't you just tell us. Fuck. <laughs> just never, me and you were playing this with them like, don't give a fuck. You're going to be fucking stupid. Give me that. Yeah. Actually, I'm going to leave and have sex with Richard's girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sam tells Kim, you can't come out. You've got to fucking wait until we say the code. She says, I hope you're going to be the winner. And she says, I have a surprise for whoever rescues her. Mm. A blowjob. <laughs> Sexy stuff. Yeah, uh, she doesn't say that, by the way. What sexy a stuff? A blow job. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give a blow job to whoever rescues me. <laughs> Except if it's Tracy, then I'm going to lick her out. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> and there's the final line for the uh, the end of this episode. <laughs> 
Well, uh, yeah. Uh, my note here is we're nearly half an hour into this film and all we've seen so far are these twats dicking about setting up this game no one understands. Yeah. Apparently what they've got to do, collect keys and and codes and clues. And, oh God, and, sounds so shit. Uh, with their scrolls. <laughs> and me, meanwhile, there I've got homing beacons and uh, look out, there's a demon. Rescue the princess for some oral sex. Perfect. Yeah, that's the game. Cut to Sir Bradley. It's the first time we've seen it. I think Bradley was actually in the room when they were doing Go Fish, but no one spoke to him. Good. And uh, he types a code into the computer. I think it's Frodo, because it's fuck, of course it is. <laughs> it says, uh, consult the wizard. <laughs> so, of course he's going to. He consults the wizard. And it comes up on the screen saying, haveth ye the code? And the code is... Frodo. Of course it is. 414. Mm-hmm. Sir Bradley. <laughs> yeah, it's Sir Bradley. And that's who's uh, contacting the games master, asking for some sort of fucking... That's oh, bullshit, isn't it? I don't know. Bravely brave Sir Bradley <laughs> requests a fucking code. <laughs> yeah, and um, what that means is Sir Bradley, he's right outside the uh, the door. Now he's knocking at both doors. <laughs> That houses the demon Nemesis. Roddy McDowell is fucking having the time of his life. He loves it. So Bradley, he's about to be slaughtered, killed, maimed, ripped asunder by Nemesis, who's waiting in this room, and he thinks it's going to help him win the game. A <laughs> foolish Sir Bradley. <laughs> is what Roddy McDowell should have said. <laughs> so, Bradley, you are a fool, sir. <laughs> yes, yeah, so, uh, anyway, he, he grants him access. <laughs> Due to him having a thing, the key. <laughs> the way he acts, he's like, uh, can I go in this room? And uh, the press is like, yes, I'm taking a key off you, though. <laughs> God yes, damn it. You only now have two remaining keys. <laughs> God, God. <laughs> Thrilling. Yes, it's breakneck stuff. I think we cut to Gary. He stumbles across a clue on a chalkboard, speaks to Sorensen to solve it, and then realises, actually, I don't know how to solve this at all. And then he does also does a weird voice. Yeah, and he draws a big old cock and balls in place of the clue, rubs the clue off, draws a big cock and balls, has a bit of a laugh. Yeah, Sorensen laughs. He's having a great time. He is enjoying it, isn't he? What Richard's done, though, Richard's just not fucking bothered. Richard's under a desk. Why has he gone under the desk? Not sure. Because he wasn't initially, and then when he hears I'd, someone come in, he hides. I'm not sure if he understands that he's the villain, mm. or whether he assumes that Sir Bradley will be there to, to <laughs> slay him. Sir Bradley. <laughs> but yeah, he hides under the... Th- I think it's because he hasn't got his mask on, so he hides. Mm. And then Sir Bradley... Sir Bradley collects immobilising crystals. My God. Yes. It's a little bag of fucking glitter, isn't it's it? It's a bag of shit. Yeah. <laughs> a bag of <laughs> dog, dog shit. dirt. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. It's a it's bag what, of dog shit. <laughs> That's what Sorensen's been leaving for them all. <laughs> little bags of doggy dirt. And um yeah, what so you gotta do, you've got to collect little bags of dog <laughs> shit that I've left around the fucking <laughs> labs. That'll be fun. Sorry, sorry, Laura, I can't have sex with you. I'm going to go around and collect dog <laughs> shit from the labs instead, wearing a fucking werewolf mask. Yeah, and calling actually, myself Nemesis. Actually, no, I'm not allowed to collect the dog shit. I've simply got to just sit here. <laughs> and then other people will throw them at me. <laughs> <laughs> the, only way to, the only way to vanquish Nemesis is to throw bags of dog shit at him. <laughs> He refers to himself as Nemesis. <laughs> God's sake, these I'm glad they're all dead. <laughs> Some spoilers coming from you, Dom, throughout this. Uh, anyway, yes. Um, Sir Bradley. Sir Bradley, he collects all that stuff. <laughs> he collects the immobilising, crystallised dog shit. And uh, hears a noise from the specimen room. Uh, does he? I didn't hear a noise. Yeah, well, he did. Fucking hell. He did. No so he's playing he's the game. Sir Bradley. <laughs> exactly. Sir Bradley, the uh, ever hearing. And uh, yeah, so he thinks, what the fuck was that? The doc, Sorensen, he can't fucking believe that he's just gone out of that room mm. and he's not fucking slaughtered by Nemesis. Yeah. Because he, he, he knows Nemesis is there. Yeah. So why hasn't he killed Sir Bradley? Yeah, he's like, Nemesis, why have you not smited Sir Bradley? And he's like, I think I was asleep. <laughs> 
It's like, what the hell do you mean? <laughs> Your nemesis is going to be sleeping on the job. This is easy piss, isn't it? This. Sorry, I think I fell asleep. It's like that's a serious issue you've got yourself there, <laughs> nemesis. <laughs> And he has a fucking go at him, and he says that if you don't get your sorry ship to shore, this is going to be the shortest game of dungeons and dog shit (laughs) we've ever played in this fucking laboratory. And he retaliates by, whatever. Yeah. Don't fucking care. And also, my note is, Richard, you're the one that wanted to play this game. Yeah. Like, no one wanted you, and the first thing you do is fuck up. Roddy McDowell's going to fucking kill you. He's going to operate badly on your brain. That's (laughs) That's, what he'll do. That's what he threatens. (laughs) If you let another person live out of that room, I will operate on your brain. (laughs) Badly. Badly. Bradley. (laughs) Sir Bradley. (laughs) (laughs) Speaking of Sir Bradley, he's in another room now. Um, No idea where where he is. It's in the dark. Every fucking room's in the dark. I don't know where anyone is. I don't know what's going on. Ken, please help me. There's a a POV shot, and it's Shackmar. Shackmar! My God. He's awoken from his slumbers. You remember Shackmar in this film, everyone? Remember that? There's a fucking baboon in it, wasn't there? Remember at the beginning? Angry (laughs) fucking baboon. Before we got into the nitty-gritty of this game, (laughs) there was a baboon. Well, now that he's awake, um, the the good part of it is that you're going to get 60, 60% baboon mm-hmm. from here on in. Probably more than that. I'd say 60% is a baboon smacking himself into a door. And you get like 80%, 80% overall of a baboon. Yeah. Yes, yes, Dom, yes, with his dick out, yes. Sorry. <laughs> the baboon's got his dick out in most of this, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Spoilers. Sorry. Sorry for not mentioning a baboon's penis yeah, well, at every opportunity. Well, it's about time you did. Well, I will. <laughs> From now on, 80% dick. <laughs> this is, is how a baboon's made. <laughs> yeah, Dick Van Dyke has that on a T-shirt. <laughs> Yeah, and on the back, he's got 20% dyke. (laughs) (laughs) That's his (laughs) T-shirt. Fucking 100 years old. (laughs) He's fucking had had a shirt. God's sake. I'm also disappointed he never has. Anyway... (laughs) Bradley Radio Sorensen to tell him he's going to check the specimen lab for Nemesis. <laughs> oh, God, I can't remember a fucking bullet point I wrote. He says, because uh, Nemesis has eternal life, and I could take it from him. <laughs> Grow up, Sir Bradley, <laughs> says Sorensen. Sorensen, he's confused. He's like, why the hell are you going in the specimen lab? Nemesis is asleep in the fu- yeah, 404 or whatever. fuck all in the specimen lab except a dead baboon. Yeah. Well, everything else is dead except the baboon, as it turns out. So Bradley sneaks into the lab, throws a handful of glitter into his own face. <laughs> <laughs> like me, eating Alpen. And he sees that all the cages have been knocked open. And there's fucking blood everywhere. All I can see is that the chimp's still alive. Everything else. Fair game. Dead. Yeah, yeah, all gone. Looks towards the window and Shackmar's there doing the staying alive pose <laughs> that uh, John Travolta does in the white suit. <laughs> yeah, with his little spindly legs. <laughs> and then someone throws a fucking stuffed baboon puppet at Sir Bradley. It's terrifying though, isn't it? And rips his fucking throat out. Damn right it does, yes. Of that Sir Bradley. Sir Bradley the Throatless, they yeah, called him they did, after yeah. that. And that's it, first kill, Ken. We're fucking three hours into the film. <laughs> first kill, Sir Bradley. <laughs> Not Sir Bradley. <laughs> he was one of my favourite characters. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, I, I quite like that death. I quite like all the deaths in this. To be honest, they're, I, they've shot pretty well. Yeah, I, I, I like the way they've done them all. It yeah, does look fucking. Cool. It does look scary. Yeah, yeah. When the I would baboon... not like to be attacked by a baboon. I'm going to th- put that out there right now. Mm-hmm. Okay, so if if you are thinking of attacking me with a baboon, I'd rather you didn't, if that's at all possible, please. Yeah. Okay. That's a good tip. Good. Yeah. Good. Good announcement. I, I, I think that's uh, maybe something that other people should just make sure that others are aware of it. Mm. Because, as I say, used to throw baboons into rooms as a joke, but it's a very serious issue. So, you know, I would rather not. Yeah. Thank you. It's a public service announcement brought to you by the Bad Movie Cult. Make sure you put it out there. That's what I do, the bottom of my emails at work. 
Uh, Sorensen, he's he basically Bradley. So Bradley's tracker goes dead, so it, it must be hooked up to some sort of heart monitor or something. Even then, he can't speak properly. Just to fucking tell him he's been attacked by a baboon. That would have saved a lot, wouldn't it? Yeah. Instead of still talking in medieval shit. Oh, so Bradley can't understand why the dog shit didn't work that he threw it. Uh... <laughs> that he threw into his own face. <laughs> Not only has he been attacked and uh, killed by a baboon, but he's got dog shit over what's left of his face. Yeah. Idiot. <laughs> anyway, Sorensen, he tries to call Sir Bradley on the walkie-talkie. Doesn't get an answer. He's dead. Uh, Sam, we, he gets to the computer with the scrolls on top. Sees uh, him and Gary, the only ones left on that level, somehow. And uh, back to Sorensen. Calls Richard, asks him to go to the fifth floor, tells him to check on Sir Bradley. Yes, go and look for Sir Bradley, nemesis. <laughs> he calls Sorensen an old cunt. <laughs> <laughs> Senile and a miserable old fuck. Yeah, he did want to play though, didn't he, Richard? <laughs> yeah, he was crying out to be involved. And then um, Sorensen calls Richard a manipulative little bitch. Ooh. Oh, little brat. It's Roddy McDowell. He's not swearing. Yeah, and he does sound. It does appear that he could have heard him say all that, didn't it? Mm. Yeah, but you know, we're never not not sure whether he did. But Richard's walking down the hallway. He's got the the werewolf mask on the top of his head. Hears a noise, puts his mask on, hopes to scare someone. Jumps in, empty room. (sighs) Shuts the door behind him, and Mm. we see under one of the desks, Shakamar. 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 I do. You do see that Shakmar's got his little stuffed. Uh, yes, animal yes. In. I've got little Shakmar and his toy. Oh, is just standing there. That is very cute. Yeah, he, he hides in the closet. Yeah, doesn't he, Richard? Yeah. Oh well, he he does hear um, Sir Bradley's walkie-talkie with Sorensen trying to get hold of him. That's how he like gets lured in. He hides in the closet. Mm-hmm. Shakmar is his first of many many attacks of a door, mm-hmm. and he absolutely beats the shit out of that door. I'm not. I wouldn't be happy being the other side of that door. No, no. Even if it's locked, you're there thinking that's fucking not going to last. That door. Apparently, they put a, a female baboon behind the door, which is why he has a why he's going insane, and b why he has a little monkey erection. Um, no, they did not have any female baboons on set. Actually, Dom. Well, then, I best <laughs> I best go fuck myself. I guess. <laughs> no, they weren't. They didn't allow it because it was too dangerous. If that was the case. So what they did, it's uh, Typhoon is the name of the baboon. Not really Shagmar. Shagmar! Uh, he had an alpha and a beta trainer. And the beta trainer was the other side of the door, whispering Typhoon. And typhoon. apparently that was enough to set him off into a fucking murderous rage. Not sure why. Not sure why that was the case. But, yeah. Why did he have an erection then? Because he thought it was a fucking woman, because it was a beta, wasn't it? The beta trainer. Mm. Yeah. I don't so. want to be a beta trainer for a baboon, Ken. I won't do oh. it. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. Not, I'm not going to ask you again. Okay? <laughs> I've noted it now. I'll stop. You said, imagine that advertised. Well, imagine need someone to whisper typhoon through, through a, a door. door at a furious baboon for an undisclosed period of time. And if he breaks through, you're fucked. Yeah. Literally. You'll have, you'll have to say... I'm not a female baboon <laughs> until he stops <laughs> raping you. Yeah, and killing you instantly. <laughs> yeah, but apparently that, that's how they did it. Wow. Yeah, it, I don't really understand any of that science behind it. Mm. But that's, that was enough to anger it so much. I also heard, and I don't think, I can't find anything that says yes or no to this, but I heard they electrified the uh, doorknobs on the doors so when he grabbed them, he was fucking electrocuted, <laughs> and that also sort of it added to the fury and the rage that it was going through. That flies in the face of everything I've ever read. Well, I... about animal safety in a fucking <laughs> film. Well, personally, I I just think it's it's just fucking terrifying, isn't it? Mm. That baboon attacks doors like fucking mental case. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would have hated to be behind one of them. So whatever they did to infuriate Typhoon. Um, it fucking worked. A uh, shot oh, fucks off anyway, and Richard thinks the coast is clear. I'm going to pour some hydrochloric acid into this <laughs> glass beaker <laughs> and and creep out into the night like some kind of midnight prowler. <laughs> yes, that would come in useful, wouldn't it? 
why the fuck he does that, I don't know. Well, it'd be very useful if uh, if he's if he sees anything that needs hydrochloric acid. Yeah. If a baboon runs at me full pelt, I'm going to get close enough so I can throw hydrochloric acid into his face. At its dick. Yeah. In the hope that it blinds it, but still so close that he can still attack me and kill me instantly. Well, whilst he's explaining this out loud... <laughs> uh... <laughs> he's running this through in his own head. Shakma! Attacks. And I think he throws the acid in his own face. He does, yes. Of course he does. Dickhead. Yeah, he's got... So Bradley throws dog shit in his own face. Richard throws acid in his own face. <laughs> it's a fucking nightmare, this thing. <laughs> this game has gone to shit. It really has. <laughs> it's a little bit out of control. Meanwhile... Bloody Patrick, Roddy McDowell, not Patrick McDowell, doesn't even fucking exist. <laughs> Roddy McDowell's upstairs thinking, oh, wonder where the thing is. Oh, I hope the princess gets saved. This People game's... are fucking dying, Roddy. This game's going well. We're 10 minutes in and two students are dead already. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yes, he's dead. Richard is dead. Yeah. Which is not confirmed until far too late in this film when we all accept he's dead right now. Also, I think the professor's very slow to react to all of this going on. You, you, the two people you've sent to that floor are both not answering their... You know, the same floor where there's a fucking baboon just loose, just around the place. They've gone total radio silence and he's still playing the game. <laughs> Yes, well, he's, every time the game goes like this, Dom, you're not expected to assume it's a murderous baboon on the loose. Yeah. Although after this, that is the first thought. But before it, no, 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 no. It's got to be like guess number eight at least. Yeah. Meanwhile, come back to the game. Our hero, Sam, he's using one of his keys to check out room 408. Mm -hmm. And I don't think you understand, Ken. I don't. That means he's got one key left. Holy shit, he only had two keys. I think he's used the two of them off screen while we're busy watching Richard throw acid in his own face <laughs> and Sir Bradley throw dog shit. Well, he's very busy, isn't he, Sam? Tracy, she's uh, leaving a room. Sam reaches for the handle and she has a reveal crystal. <gasps> no way. So he has to show her the clues he's gathered so far. Oh, that's a clever one, isn't it? Yeah. And she does she utilise it? Does she deploy the reveal crystal? She does, but Sam has written nothing in his notebook. What a waste of fucking time. <laughs> yes. Ours yeah. and theirs. Because you need to understand, Ken, he's having trouble on this level. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You can't expect a smooth sailing when it comes to Roddy McDowell. <laughs> <laughs> he's always got a trick up his sleeve, like releasing a live baboon. <laughs> <laughs> a furious, sex-starved baboon. Yes. The first level, you've got to solve Frodo Pasco. <laughs> the second level is a live baboon. <laughs> And after that, you'll probably be dead. Yeah. So we have got a level three. After that, you get a blowjob. <laughs> level three is a blowjob from a teenager. <laughs> it's great level design, Roddy. <laughs> oh, Dr. Sorensen. <laughs> Please leave immediately. <laughs> There's no place for you at this university. <laughs> survived and he was explaining this <laughs> game to people. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. <laughs> Jesus Christ. More to the point, what if Richard had won? It's his fucking sister. For God's sake. <laughs> oh, God. Anyway, uh, where were we? They're on the they're on the walkie-talkie land. Oh, yeah. And they say, it? Games Master, I'm off to check on Richard. Or as he say, Games Master here, I'm off to check on Richard. I can't remember. I didn't write which one it was. I'm assuming... Sam, Sam's not the Game Master. No, I'm assuming... Oh, no, yeah, sorry, he does say that, yeah. It's uh, Roddy McDowell. Yeah, I'm assuming I'm... he's saying, this is Games Master. Yeah. I'm off to check on Richard. Yeah. And he gets the... This is an unusual bit of dialogue I wrote down. And Sam says, everything okay? And he says, nothing, but I better... <laughs> I'm not sure what the fuck was going on with the dialogue there, but I I played it twice just to make sure that I wrote that down. Yeah. But... That's what was said. Yeah, they're having two different conversations. Aren't I think they? so. Yeah, and neither of them really give a fuck as they accept that was done. Tracy asks uh, Jonas to hold position, and Sorensen tells her that I'll only be a minute. 
And it doesn't really fucking matter. Yeah. <laughs> we're all adults here. It doesn't really matter what you do. Yes, whole position, like we're in the fucking <laughs> army. <laughs> yeah. Sam and Tracy start to have a little smoochy kiss. In flagrante delecto. Oh, yes. We have a quick cut, actually, to uh, Princess Blowjob up upstairs. <laughs> Princess Fellatio sitting up there in her tower. Oh, Italian. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's doing fuck all. And we cut back downstairs to where the action is. Is that what she's just fully dressed now? And you think, why yes, the fuck yes, are you dressed Yeah, she's wearing up? a princess outfit. Why are you, why are you dressed Where's up? Where's she got that from? She's got that as a surprise, which I'm guessing she alluded to, um, along with the uh, the oral sex. But So she's dressed up now as a as a princess from the past. Sat in a fucking room waiting for somebody to turn up. Yeah. <laughs> and um... <laughs> anyway, we cut back down. We cut back down to Sorensen, and he finds dead Richard. Dead Dick. He finds dead Richard with his face burnt <laughs> off by acid and attacked by an animal. You can see the skeletal. You can see his skull, and he checks his pulse. Yeah. <laughs> and. And as well, because he's a doctor, what he also does is he puts both of his hands <laughs> Why does he do into that? his open wounds <laughs> and then smears it all over himself. <laughs> <laughs> Why does he do It's like Neil Breen. <laughs> Just smears the blood all over his own yeah, like face. Lord of the Flies, isn't he? He's gone absolutely insane. Why does he do that? I'm not so. He checks the pulse. He finds out he's dead. So he just sticks his hands into the open flesh wounds yep, of his chest. And then wipes it over himself. We're not sure, but he does. He does, yeah. And then he goes back into the elevator. But wait. What was that noise? Shakma. Shakma. Shakma! <laughs> he turns around and Shakma's standing there. Just stood there, isn't he? Yeah. Stood at the other end of the corridor, staring at him, standing on two legs, looking at him, going, fuck are you doing? Yeah. Sorensen's like, what the fuck are you doing? I can see your little dick, Shakmar, is what he says. Yeah, and Shakmar says, I can fucking see yours as well. <laughs> <laughs> Roddy McDowell. <laughs> He's on the floor there with his face burned off. Yeah, and so terrified is Rowdy Roddy McDowell that he can't close the elevator, no. even though Shakmar's running the entire length of a corridor at him, very, very angry. A bit like the um, Holy Grail. The guards on the uh, the castle where he just keeps running from the the, the back, That's, yeah. uh, that that sort of thing. This is until the second suddenly, time we've mentioned that. Yeah, <laughs> until suddenly, he's Shakmar attack. Because what happened is Roddy McDowell's left the elevator door open by putting his key in it and turning it so it keeps oh, the elevator door open. The idiot. So when he's trying to close it, he's forgotten that his key's in the lock. Some games master this fucking idiot is. So Shakmar runs at him and then throws a stuffed puppet version of himself <laughs> at him. <laughs> Which proceeds to rip Rowdy Roddy McDowell apart. Yeah. Asunder. Yeah. And he's dead. Yes. It's the end. It's the end of the professor. Yes. The yeah. games master. He's the, down. The game master's gone. And it's a fucking good job because he'd be in prison for the rest of his life if he survived. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> I quite like. Again, I quite liked it. I like the attack. Yeah, it it's, does look it is, good. It is good. I don't know whether... Do you think they're controlling the puppet themselves? Yes, The person 100%. who's being attacked. Especially that's, that is the most obvious when Gary gets attacked later. Yeah, that's, that's I, I guess. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I thought it'd be good. You know, like the um, American Werewolf in London, where it's actually a wolf, somebody's doing it behind them. Yeah. With like, but yeah, okay. Cut back to Sam and Tracy. They're still kissing, smooching. Ooh. And they're interrupted because Sam jumps up, turns, turns the light on, and he's heard something. What on earth has he heard? She asks what's wrong, and he just simply says, Shakma! 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 Have you ever suddenly jumped up mid-erection and shouted Shakma out loud? More times than I should have. Yes, I thought so. But sometimes it adds a little je ne sais quoi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. qu'est-ce que c'est? Oh, that's what she said. <laughs> uh, they run to the elevator. They're trying to call the elevator. And they're like, why is this not working? It's because Roddy McDowell's fucking yeah, stuck in it. because he's fucking the corpse of Roddy McDowell blocking an elevator, which is what I always now assume if the elevator's not working. I assume it's the corpse of Roddy McDowell. <laughs> Just blocking, blocking it. Blocking it on a different floor. Yeah. Bloody poor prints everywhere I've written. 
Roddy yeah, McDowell it. throat ripped out. Yeah, it's good though. I like it. Uh, Tracy realizes something's jamming the elevator doors because they can't hear the dinging sound of the doors. And then we hear a sh- the shriek of Shakmar. Shakmar. Meanwhile, remember Gary? Hello, Gary. He's trying to contact the Games Master. <laughs> games Master, I need your help. Yeah, he's um, he does more. Sort he's of, on the stairs, isn't he? Yeah, he's on the stairs to the fourth level. He does voices. He does Star Trek. He does do silly voices. Yeah, yeah, and then just stands around waiting. But then he hears something, so he hides because he's still playing the fucking game, isn't he? <laughs> Gary's still playing. Now that everyone else in the building's kind of aware something's going amiss. Gary, still playing. Still there, trying to get his little blowjob. It's, uh, although, fair dues. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so Gary, he's, he's, he's having a hide. But wait. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, continue to wait. <laughs> Sam and Tracy, they make it to the fifth floor stair. Well, Tracy thinks they should get help. Sam says... No, no, I, can, I need to handle this myself. Shakmar, meanwhile, is on patrol, he isn't is. he? Just sort of wandering around the place, just looking, standing up, looking at stuff, and then fucking off. He says, Tracy, if I'm not back in two minutes... This is Sam, by the way, this is not, not Shakmar. Shakmar. <laughs> okay. Excuse me, <laughs> Tracy, if I'm not back in two minutes... Just break character here for a second. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Only if some fucking idiot keeps whispering my name from behind the door, it's really pissing me off. Sammy creeps down the hall, he sees a load of bloody poor prints... Calls out for Sorensen. That's what he shouts. Bloody poor prince. <laughs> Which is an Australian uh, cry of shock. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think you'll agree. And that's where we hear Shakmar scream again and Sam hides in a closet. This is the first of many I'm going to hide in a closet mm-hmm. from Sam. Sam. And, and yet more Shakmar sort of banging on a door and, and shit. We cut to Gary anyway. Now, while Sam's in a cupboard, we cut to Gary. He's still fucking upset that he can't get Sorensen on the walkie-talkie land. He's going to the fourth floor. Tracy hears him, calls out, but he sneaks through the door because he's, again, just thinks they're still playing the game. Of course he does. Of course he does. Uh, Tracy, she leaves the stairwell, call for Sam. Shackmar shows up, and then Sam, like, bursts out and starts trying to calm him down like he's a dog. Like, good boy, sit, stay. (laughs) To a fucking baboon. (laughs) Doesn't work, does it? No, they end it's up... It's odd, isn't it? And they go running up the fucking corridor again. For the rest of this film, to be honest, it's a lot of running up corridors, hiding in closets, and we watch Shakmar go insane at a door. Yeah, Shakmar smack the shit out of doors. Um, and they hold the door against him, and to be honest with you, I think that's pretty much useless because that door's coming off the hinges before That's Shackmar... what I mean. That's what I mean. If I was the other side of that door, I'd be fucking terrified, even if I'm holding on to it. I'm yeah. thinking, this ain't going to last. They go up to the sixth floor. The sixth floor? <laughs> the sixth level. Uh, looking for it. They need a phone. They're looking for a phone to help. All the doors are locked because of Professor fucking dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> Professor Health and Safety's fucking <laughs> locked them all. <laughs> Apparently, the only phones in this whole place are in the teachers' offices, which seems massively unlikely. It but... is, and also dangerous. <laughs> yeah, but still, we've ignored the rest. Tracy decides to pull the fire alarm. Nothing happens because, of course. Professor yep. Health and Safety. Yeah, we turn all them off as well. Ha. Why would that need to be turned off? Yeah. What if there's an <laughs> why, would the, fire? why would the fire alarm need to be turned It can't be what part of the game is. There's a, a small series of fires <laughs> that I've set. <laughs> yeah, but don't worry. I've locked all the doors so you can't leave yeah, exactly. and I've turned it's the fire like, alarms off. There's no off. fucking way that that would be necessary for a game of Dungeons and fucking Dragons. <laughs> Meanwhile, Shakmar is in the lab. He's next to Richard's corpse. I think he's eating him. I think he's raping his eyeball socket. Yeah, probably. Straight in there. He hears a noise, runs out into the hall, goes at the stairway stairwell door again. Has another crack at the door, doesn't he? Yeah. And then back to Sam and Tracy going into the electrical lab. And they grab a strobe light. Thought of that as we'll use this and we'll blind the fucking little... This light will blind him temporarily. Sam's unhappy with that, though. That's why she says temporarily. Mm. In case he means forever. (laughs) (laughs) This is so powerful it will blind everyone forever. We can't blind him. All he's done is kill three of our fucking (laughs) friends. Including our professor. Yeah. (laughs) And she's like, okay then. It will be temporarily. Oh, that's okay, then. I'm kind of annoyed at the professor now, actually, thinking about it. <laughs> now that he's locked us in with a fucking live baboon. There's no time for that. Gary, meanwhile. Remember Gary? Yes, I do, yes. He comes out as homosexual. <laughs> <laughs> he comes out of the closet, doesn't he? Yeah. 
Very brave, of course, back then. <laughs> Uh, back to Sam and Tracy. <laughs> I know it's well, it's Gary comes out and that's it. That's the fucking bullet point. <laughs> back to Sam and Tracy. They see Shaq Mari's. They hit the strobe light on him. Um, it's actually when 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 he's there, he says fire, like it's a rifle or something, but it's just a flashlight, and they just flash. It's like the, like a camera flash, isn't it? Really, ready aim fire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the light just kind of makes Shaq Mari's go. Huh? Mm. And then he just fucking attacks them again. Yeah. <laughs> so, does when, when she kept saying temporarily, what she could have said was for almost a one second. <laughs> because yeah. rather than being blinded, he just really fucking winds him up, doesn't it? And he attacks them again. So great weapon. Yeah. Yeah, well done. Instead of getting a fucking stick or something, or something useful. They've got a flashlight that blinds him for less than a second and really pisses him off. Yeah. And Tracy and Sam may fucking run away. Of course they do. Let's do this again. Yeah. They find uh, the professor's corpse with his throat ripped out. Sam checks for a pulse. <laughs> what he doesn't do, though, on this occasion is uh, rub his hands all over his throat and then lick it. Yeah. So that's one thing at least they're learning. Uh, he drags uh, Sorensen's body through the hall. Yeah, Does... unnecessary, of course, but yeah. still, he's going to do it. <laughs> yeah, he might be alive, Ken. You just don't know. You don't know at this point. No, he did check his pulse, so he would know. Yeah. Yeah, he says uh, he, t- he covers the doctor, doesn't he, with his shirt, Sam. And then he tells Tracy to go and distract this wild and furious murderous ape. whilst Monkey. Monkey. While he goes and pulls Richard off. Yeah. Yeah. And she goes, oh, okay. You know, because Richard might still be alive. That's they... what they think. They think Richard might be alive. Yeah, drags it, drags him into the stairway. He takes his shirt off. He's wearing a beautiful white polo shirt. It's very nice, isn't it's it? Very fetching. Yeah, good for getting blood all over as well. There isn't it? a nice white shirt like that. Yeah, yeah, of course it is. Which we see later. Uh, Sam says that must be Richard's corpse in the lab. But wait, is he dead? Nobody seems to believe that Richard's dead for some reason. He's got so, no face. Yeah, so, I don't think anyone's seen him, have they? They just see him and then they think he might still be alive. Did he stop just yelling at Tracy? He said, didn't you say that his hand moved? Yeah, like, that's what I mean. He's like, when and why and how could that have been? What? He's yeah. fucking dead. He's got no face. <laughs> he got a burnt to the bloody bone. And yeah, that's when we do Operation Human Shield and he tells fucking Tracy yeah. to go <laughs> and distract Shaq Go, go and distract Shaq Mar. It should be okay. Yeah. yeah, I'll just go and look at Richard's face. What Tracy decides to do, Ken, is she, her distraction is her very, very slowly walking down the halls mm-hmm. and uh, scream at the top of her lungs. And Shaq Mari falls for it, hook, line and sinker. Bloody does, doesn't he? Runs out the lab down the hall, looks fucking insane, looks terrifying. Yes, he does, yeah. You don't want and, that running at you. Anything with an, the actual baboon in this is scary, watching it run and shit. Meanwhile, Sam, Sam's making the most of this distraction, but he's going to go and have a little look at Richard and see how, see if he's okay. But when he sees him, he does a really long shit. <laughs> Just by looking at him, it looks like he's having a shit. Oh, I thought ages. he meant, like, along the ground. <laughs> He may be, that's what I mean. It looks like he's shitting himself, but really, really slowly. Yeah. Because his face, he can't believe what he's seeing here. Richard is not alive after all. No. Folks, can you believe it? Shatmar gives up on trying to get to Tracy and runs back towards Sam. Sam runs to the stairwell, runs back out to get Tracy. She's somehow locked herself out the room. (laughs) She's just left. Yeah, and then Tracy's Tracy's somehow in a box. How's How's she in a box? Don't know. She's just in some sort of chest. She's uh, maybe a mythical chest. Yes. <laughs> and part of the game. Yeah. But yeah, she's just out. She's some. She's in a box, and Shakmar knows she's in the fucking box. So that's not really done anything of any use for anybody. Um, and if she's, if he's not sure, if he's just sounding it out, maybe she's in this box. She confirms it by screaming really loudly right at him. So now he does know. Um, and then shout, Sam, he's over here. <laughs> In case Sam's oblivious to the whole fucking thing going on. The sound of a baboon trying to smash this cabinet to pieces that she's in. Yeah, but it, apparently it turns out that Sam knows that. Yeah. Uh, and he's just hiding anyway. <laughs> he's like, fuck that. <laughs> fuck that shit. Fuck that. It's a baboon. He'll literally rip my face off. 
He does. He tries the uh, sit, stay, heal thing again. Yeah, does does all that. Yeah, the baboon whisperer. He uh, tricks Jack Moore into a room, runs back to the stairwell. It's because he does the in one door and out the other, isn't it? The mm. oldest trick in the book. Fortunately, baboons can't read. Yeah, it goes back to the stairwell, but Sorensen's blocking the fucking door. How's he done that? It wasn't before. <laughs> the corpse has moved. Maybe he wasn't dead. So they've got to pull his He's foot in and slam the door. He's got the immortality crystals. That's what it was. <laughs> on the dog shit, you mean? Yeah. He's got dog shit on his face. This is where you see the monkey bastard fake hands. Yeah, it's a great hands, aren't they? Yeah. I love it. It's so funny to see. It's just like two monkey hands on sticks that they're just... Sh- <laughs> Putting really quickly through the door. It looks fucking funny. <laughs> oh, it's always funny. Yeah. Uh, Stam starts going through Sorensen's pockets. He's looking for his keys because he didn't spot them the seven times he's been past that fucking <laughs> elevator. Him and Tracy, they scream in each other's faces for a little bit. I like it because uh, what she asks him is, uh, is this part of the game, Sam? This is like, <laughs> yes. Yes, it is. Yeah, this is uh, this is uh, this one of our favourites. One yeah. of our favourite parts is who's going to get killed by a baboon. Yeah, Professor Sorensen. <laughs> one of the parts is let's all die. <laughs> yeah, I'll put that. It would be mental. It'd be a lot more fun than the game they were planning, but it'd still be mental, wouldn't it, to include that bit? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what they say, though, now is... Uh, they, they make up, obviously. They both realise that they're asking stupid questions of each other. Is Richard alive? <laughs> and uh, so he says, he's. oh no, she's going to go up to the sixth floor and look for Sir Bradley. And he's going to go to the Bravely third floor. Bravely brave Sir Bradley. He's going to go to the third floor. And they're both pretty confident that Shackmar can't get off the fifth floor. Okay. Mm-hmm. You read it. You you okay with that? Mm-hmm. And then they both go up the stairs. <laughs> so, so I'm not sure that he is going to the third floor at all, <laughs> unless he's forgotten where he is at the moment. This is like in Monty Python when he's trying to explain to the guards <laughs> yeah. to guard the fucking That's what prince. I thought. And then they both just pop upstairs. And then we've got me. Where are you going? Is what she says to him. <laughs> I'm coming with you. I'm coming with you. <laughs> and then I've got I've got meanwhile Princess Fellatio. Uh, he's still upstairs waiting for cock. That's yes. what I've written there. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Tracy, she finds the radio, uh, but uh, it's broken. And Sam uh, decides just to try and shout the whole fucking building down by just going, Gary! You know, which won't alert Shakmar at all. He's heard nothing at all yet throughout this film. Richie! <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Gary... Gary's on the fucking radio. Gary's still got his radio and he's still playing the game. (laughs) (laughs) Everyone's dead, Gary. (laughs) He's going to head up to level five, Gary, Mm. which is the worst thing they could possibly be doing, isn't it? That's that's exactly what they don't want him to do. Um, Even though, and then they just get on the walkie talkie and says, Gary, where are you? As you fucking said, I'm going up to... What? Why are you on my frequency, guys? No cheating. (laughs) The games master will be unhappy. (laughs) But anyway, yeah, he he pretends to be William Shatner again, doesn't he? And he does that fucking ridiculous one. Oh, that bollocks, yeah. I think, unless unless I'm reading Shatner, and what I actually wrote was (laughs) Shackmar. Did you think we were watching a film called Shatner? (laughs) (laughs) About yeah. William Shatner we're, loose we're in a cap- lab. Captain Kirk attacking people dressed as a monkey. <laughs> William Shatner. <laughs> Shatner. They, do, they operate on William Shatner, inject something into his brain. And it becomes a murderous monkey man. Yeah. I'd watch that. <laughs> so would I. <laughs> yeah, I think it's Shakma, actually. Shakma. He's waiting at the elevator, isn't he? He's just stood there waiting like he's patiently pressed the button and he's waiting perhaps to go shopping. Yeah. But um, unfortunately, um, it is opening up at floor five and Shakmar fucking attacks. He does. And this is where you get the, the biggest, like, I'm holding a puppet whilst it attacks me. I think so, yeah. It's, it's disappointing. But, but... Yeah, they should have just let an actual baboon kill that well, actor. Well, you know, I did write in. But no, I was too late. Yeah, ten years after it was made when I first watched it. <laughs> is he dead then, Gary? He's fucking dead, isn't he, yeah. Gary? His face torn up asunder again. Yeah. 
Uh, the, the bit that I like though on this is when he's attacked Gary. Is the um, you get the the blood dripping from the baboon's jaws, don't you? As he looks up and sees her because she's mm. just standing there, rather than think, oh shit. And going again, she's just standing still, looking mm. at the carnage. Yeah, yeah, and I, I, I like that. I liked the uh, the blood dripping from the baboon puppet. Yeah. So you know, and then obviously, <laughs> fucking chase is on. Yeah. He's not finished yet, old Shakmar. More running, more hiding. She runs into the bathroom. Yeah, she does drop the radio, of course, which mm-hmm. is uh, is, is what what she has to do as she's a female character. Runs into a toilet stall, tries to open one of the vents. Yep, the door's being uh, attacked once again. Poor Jim Morrison. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, uh, Come on, baby. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, baboon! (laughs) Ah, William Shatner! (laughs) Well, it was. You never knew how he died, did you? That's true. It's one of those mysteries. William Shatner. You never know how Jim Morrison died. It all points to Shatner now, doesn't it? All, all roads lead to Shatner <laughs> as one of our albums. Yeah, that was what was written on his uh, tombstone, isn't it, Morrison? <laughs> um, yeah, so he, she's in the toilet store. She tries to get the air vent off. Sam, he's still running around the fucking stairwell. He doesn't know what floor <laughs> he's What's he doing? <laughs> he's forgotten what floor he was supposed to be on. So he's just running up and down the stairwell. Um, <laughs> She, uh, <laughs> she, um, our hero, everybody. She, she does try to go for the radio. She sees where the radio is, sees that Shakmar's not there. So she runs out of the door to try and get the radio, immediately thinks, oh, fuck, and stops trying to get the radio when she's closer to it than she is back to the door. Runs back to the door, Shakmar smashes the shit out of that door because he's round the corner like lightning. And, um, yeah, just smashes through the door. She's there. She's trying to get back in the toilet. She, his little hands, his little tiny hands are there at the door again. It's, it's, it's breakneck pace. <laughs> she's in the cubicle. She's trying to get back through the vent that she started to fuck with before she inexplicably stopped trying to fuck with it. And um, Shakmar's in. Yeah. Shakmar's in the bloody toilets. Yeah. He's in the stalls. And um, she's pulled down. From the vent into the cubicle. Yeah. Noises. I really like that bit. Yeah, when she's pulled down. Yeah, I like that bit. I like that bit. And yeah, at the end, yeah. Shakmar attacks. Dead. Tracy, dead. I was surprised, actually. I enjoyed it, yeah. I I was really pleased because I thought we didn't see it. And I thought, oh, no, we're going to cut back and she'll be all right. She'll be alive. But um, no, confirmed dead. Yeah. Tracy's out of here. Yeah. I just leave Sam, who's still running like an absolute loot, like Forrest Gump, just up and down the fucking stairs, and Kim, who's still waiting to suck somebody off. Yeah. Do you remember Kim, by the way? She's... Kim, yeah, yeah, old princess. Yeah, yeah, she's, yeah, she's just upstairs, isn't she? Yeah. Well, Sam... Fortunately, Sam's remembered that if he's on stairs, he can go upwards, so he does, and finds Kimberly. Yeah. Who's just uh, just sitting there playing with herself. Yeah. Tells her actually the game's over. Everyone's dead except us two. <laughs> Um, and she says, well, aren't you going to say I look nice? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he's, he's more important things on his mind. I like the fact that he smashes something and then just w- w- walks off from it. <laughs> he just forgets why he was doing that. Yeah, it's the fire extinguisher he wants. Isn't yeah, it? and then he shouts at Kimberly. Kim, yeah, she appears holding a plate of pie. <laughs> oh. And she's like, yeah, but you didn't say the code word, so why would I reply? Yeah, because yeah, he's like, why didn't you, didn't you hear me shouting? You didn't say the code word. Here's some pie. This is my big uh, I'm secret. Eating, I'm eating pie. It is an edible pie, by the way. Not a uh, sexual pie. <laughs> sexual pie. <laughs> and then... Yes. <laughs> after after all this, she's like, hang on a minute. You've got blood all over you. And we cut to Laura. She's outside. Laura is listening to the worst music. Laura, this is Richard's girlfriend, by the way, who's uh, called time on the waiting for Richard to turn up. So uh, she's gone to pick him up. Yeah, she's in her car. She's listening to the worst music. It's like accordion rock. Mm, incredibly poor. It's fucking terrible. It's like what? What kind of? We need some royalty-free music, but let's get the worst possible that this young girl would be listening to. Yeah, but she's enjoying it, isn't she? Yeah, she's tapping away on the old wheel. She's uh, rocking her shoulders. Uh, unfortunately, every. <laughs> <laughs> Just like Dom's done there, you've not seen that, and it's probably for the best. I wish I hadn't. Um, no, he's doing it again, Jesus. Yeah, so, but now... 
<laughs> He's line dancing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And um, they think, I know what we can do. Let's get her attention. But we're up here on the sixth floor. How can we get her attention down there on the floor floor? <laughs> Let's drop kick a baboon into her car. <laughs> and that'll get her attention. It would have worked on both counts, wouldn't it? <laughs> They'd have been safe and they would have got her attention. <laughs> Albeit perhaps killed her. And the baboon. That's quite a distance. He's like Kim Sam says what Kim. What do you think? What do you think's the height the highest height you could drop a baboon and it would survive? What do you reckon? Oh, how high do you think? Because obviously, they're, you know, they're, they're tree climbers, aren't they? Are they baboons? Yeah. Okay. So how high do you reckon they've previously Plummeted. fallen <laughs> and survived? Yeah, there's no there's no uh, branches to like break fall or anything. It's just a, a, a straight drop. Mm. Would you believe they could survive from the first floor of a, a, a normal house? Yes. Okay. What about the second floor, then? Of a, of By a first floor, you mean down the, the... No, that's the ground floor. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking... <laughs> I think I'd probably survive that. Probably, I think yeah, you would. Yeah, I think probably. you'd have survived the second floor as well, Ken. No, no, no. Ken's no. instantly dead <laughs> from falling. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to head first. <laughs> I suppose it is how it lands, isn't it? Yeah, no, okay. It's just it just jumps out then. It's jumping out, so it's expecting it as well. Mm. What's the highest height you reckon above? What's he them? landing on? The ground. Grass. Grass. Grass verge. Grass grit. <laughs> Dirty dust and grit. <laughs> I think it could survive a like I'm thinking like cats can survive pretty high. Well up. yeah, I know, yeah. But it's, it's a different animal. Oh, is it? <laughs> yeah, that's why you're not a vet. <laughs> So yeah, that's why, true. Why not a veteran? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it could survive at least a, the, the like a house height. What, from the roof? Yeah, from the actual roof of a house. Probably, probably higher, but I think roof you height. We're going safe. I don't know. I don't know. I think a gorilla might not, because it's big as fuck in it. A I gorilla. Don't think gorillas climb heights, do no. they? They don't scale heights, do they? No. They're not built for that. No. Well, I think it's an incredible question. And I think we should throw it open. What's the highest height you believe a baboon can survive a jump from? Yeah, or what's the highest height you've thrown a baboon from if you've actually done a test yourself? Yeah, let or, us know. or do you think from 12 feet I would survive? Because Dom seems to think that that's ridiculous that I'd be dead from that. I think that's reasonable, is it? 12 foot? It's quite no. a high fall. You're fucking 12 foot standing up anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, it's like double. <laughs> yeah. a double Kenneth. Yeah, two Kenneths and you're 12 foot. Yeah, I suppose. Okay. That'd be ridiculous if you died from a 12 foot fall. <laughs> unless you fell literally the worst way you could imagine, and impaled yourself on something. Okay, well, it could happen. So, yeah, what do you reckon? It's like if you'd stood on your own shoulders and fell, you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> Ken's got a very, very soft um, skull. The Fontanelle. The, the Fontanelle, of course. <laughs> Kenneth Fontanelle. <laughs> Kenneth Fontanelle. <laughs> yes, Dom's Achilles heel, but Kenneth Fontanelle. <laughs> so anyway, there you go. Do you think I, I can survive uh, more than I believe I can? Uh, or do you think Dom's just, just whistling Dixie? <laughs> Do I think Kenneth's indestructible and he can survive from any height? <laughs> Let's not get me confused with the flying corpse, of course, who's already dead and can survive anything yes. because of it. <laughs> anyway, enough of that. What were we talking about? Uh, he's got blood on... Oh, they, they drop-kicked a baboon into Laura's That's car. That's right, yes. And then uh, also threw some cutlery. They found some, some forks. Cutlery, some knives and forks. They've yep. thrown some knives and forks to try and get her attention. And goodness me, they're bad at that, aren't they? Yeah. They're very poor at that. They're getting nowhere near. I don't know why they can't open the window. Well, I think they're banging on the window, aren't they? Maybe fucking Sorensen's locked and glued all the windows shut as well. A <laughs> <laughs> fucking lunatic. Sam says, we need to get everyone together who's dead, and then we need to find a phone. Yes, we're not sure why. Not why we need to get everyone together after they're dead, but we definitely do need to do that. Kim decides to grab a knife for protection. This is the first time anyone's grabbed a weapon and we're an hour and ten minutes into the film. <laughs> yep, she um, she finds a radio as well, doesn't she? She does. 
Yeah, Sam, however, Sam's decided that what he's going to go and do is he's going to stare at some more corpses like he can't fucking believe what he's seeing. He's seen it. Even it's his idea. But he can't fucking believe it <laughs> when he sees Gary. It's his idea to go and look for corpses. And when he finds one, he's just staring at it like he's having a fucking coma. Coma attack. He's just like... <laughs> like he's just going to collapse. And when he sees Gary, Gary is covered in fucking blood and dead as fuck. Still checks his pulse. Well, you never know. He's a doctor, isn't he? You've got to, you've got to do the, uh, the, do the basics. Can't just call it. Kim decides to ignore everything Sam said to her and decides to fuck off on her own to the fifth floor. Finds poor Prince, a walkie-talkie. She, she's roaming around. Sam finds her again and shouts at her and uh, tells her to <laughs> fuck off back where she was supposed to be so he can go into the ladies' toilets. Yes. And unfortunately, when he gets there... It's Tracy. And she's dead. He's crying. He's dance dance fighting himself. Yeah, he's very upset by that, isn't he? She's in there and somebody has poured red paint all over her. It's absolutely unacceptable behaviour. Sam punches Kim in the face when she turns up. Yeah. Kicks her right up the chuff. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put a stop to her. Says, you need to go upstairs and get Laura's attention while I'll tit about down here for no reason. Go on, off you go. Kim finds a clue. My God, for, for the game. <laughs> yes, it's a, a weapons amulet. <laughs> That's right, imagine that. They've got fucking weapons all along and he's just hidden them as well, they bastard. Yeah, it's dumb but, shit on a stick. But those weapons, close. Marbles. Marble, yeah, bag of marbles. Bag of marbles. And she actually goes... So great or something like that. Superb, fucking brilliant. Yay, marvelous. Stupendous. <laughs> she <said>. Immaculate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something bullshit like that. Yeah. But uh, yeah, she's happy with that, whereas I'd be thinking, oh, for fuck's sake. A bag of marble. Fucking weapons. Gun. <laughs> that would have been better, wouldn't it? You got a fucking gun. <laughs> they should have guns. You've got baboons in the fucking place. <laughs> Where are the tranquilizer guns? No time for that. She's got marbles. Where are the tranquilizer guns, Game Master? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Yeah, she uses those marbles to um, also miss the car that Mm. she's throwing them all at. She's fucking rubbish at that game. Yeah. And uh, sure enough, uh, she just fucks off in the car, doesn't she? She's gone. She yeah, Kim uses a flashlight in the end. Cause she fucks off with the marbles, doesn't get a single one where she wants it, and then Laura just fucks off. Yeah. She goes, this is a stupid game, and yeah. drives off. Yeah, she assumes the, the flashlight is, is a part of the game, and she yeah. fucks off. Out of there. Kim leaves a note for Sam, then fucks off herself. Yep, yeah. Sam, meanwhile, he's carrying Tracy like Frankenstein's monster, carrying a victim. Yeah. Uh, very, very slowly as well, equally as slowly as as he would. <laughs> Doing that as he <laughs> That's walking. it, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lays her down in the corridor, kisses her, bit weird on the vagina yep right even weirder <laughs> for 10 minutes <laughs> <laughs> and we have to watch it uncomfortable viewing uh, especially as Kimberly's there in the background watching just going Ooh. and yeah. Jack Ma was wanking his little monkey dick <laughs> he stood next to her <laughs> they just looked down share a look go <laughs> yeah and then carry on None of that happens, surprisingly. <laughs> I don't know if you knew that. Yeah, nice nice get-out clause, Dom. <laughs> People would watch this if we hadn't tell them that. He spots that there's keys when he, he puts them all at the uh, elevator. He's, oh, yeah, here, here are the keys. Here's the fucking keys, look. Yeah, and then holds them up like he's pulled the sword from the fucking stone or some shit. The key code. That's what he shouts. He shouts, I found the keys, amulet. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, they're actually just keys. The amulet. The Amulet of the Keys. So fuck off, Sam. He goes up to the seventh floor and sees the note that Kim's left him, and it's a note that says she's gone to find Richard. Yeah, remember how alive Richard yeah, is? Remember Richard? How everyone still thinks he's alive, even yeah. though surely she knows he's dead. Yeah, like that's and not what? the first thing Sam would tell her, that no. everyone's dead now. Except perhaps Richard, who hasn't got a face, and he is dead because I saw him. Definitely dead. Yeah, I'll go and find him. He's probably still alive. She does find him. And he's, and he's probably still alive. And he's definitely dead. He's <laughs> definitely still dead, Richard. Yep. Gets scared by a cat. Where the fuck's a cat come from? Why is there a cat in there now as well? 
Katner. <laughs> That's what it is. William Katner. <laughs> Katner. Yeah, William Shatner with a fucking cat on his head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wearing a cat mask. Yeah. Yeah, looking like in the musical Cats. Yeah. Called Shats. Shats. <laughs> 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 That's what he's doing, yeah. dancing around the place. Um, she finds also Sir Bradley. Oh, no. He's dead. Oh. And then um, fucking Shakmar attacks her. Shakmar. Shakmar! See, I think she's dead. I think so. It's like, I'm very shocked that they killed the two women. Well, good. He, yeah. Good, he, though. He fucked around with both of them, and they both ended up dead. That's what happens, isn't it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, meanwhile, um, Sam uh, himself, he appears to have gone completely insane yeah. <laughs> whilst we've been away. Yeah, he's at, at his own hands. Yeah, he's collecting corpses. He's taped a potato peeler to a stick. <laughs> he's uh, <laughs> He calls 911, who answer the fucking phone, and he just doesn't bother to speak at all. Just stares blankly. Yeah, it's just like, oh, for fuck's sake. I have to do this myself. Do what? Yeah, doesn't even say that to them. No. Doesn't speak at all. Finally gets through to somebody and says nothing about anything. So well done, Sam. Yeah, he's our hero. There's a monkey I've got to spank, is what he says. <laughs> yeah, but he does tool himself up, doesn't he? It's a tool-up sequence. And by that, he just puts some tape on his own arms. Yeah. That's it. Tapes up his own arms, gets his potato peeler on a stick. Yeah. Ooh, look out, Chuck Ma. Yeah. <laughs> Here I come. He's got a knife in his belt. He has got the knife, hasn't he? Yeah. yeah. A flashlight as and well. And a flashlight, of course. Yes, yeah. he's got a little flashlight. Uh, what the fuck happens now? It's just Sam just looking to talk, around a starts bit. starts to talk to Chuck Ma, telling us his plan. He's like that. No, no, no. You can come to me. Or like at that. me. Like that, that's what he says. Chuck Ma, uh, you can come at me. And Shakmar's like, oh, all right, I fucking will. <laughs> Prepare for the vengeance of the baboon. I fucking will. You've got a potato peeler. I'm a fucking and baboon. A, a stick and a little bloody torch. Yeah. I'll have you. What else happens there? He, he hides from him. Because although he's training to be a doctor, one of Sam's first loves is that uh, his dream of being an electrician. Yeah. Because he, he messes with the wires, doesn't he? He puts a little bit of water. I think he has a little piss on the floor. And he puts some <laughs> wires in it. Yeah. And then he fucks off and hides, thinking, <laughs> I just need him to stand in my piss. <laughs> There's nothing a baboon loves more than... <laughs> Standing in piss. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's one of those trivia things. He does, though. Yeah, it's because it's he's got a mouse, hasn't he? There's a mouse in a cage, and he puts that on a chair. Despite all your rage. <laughs> <laughs> and he, put, he puts it on a chair. Yeah. I don't know why he does, puts it on a chair, but he does anyway. And uh, Shakmar can hear a mouse. Even a mouse on a cage on a table would not have made the same noise as a mouse in a cage on a chair. Everyone knows that. Yeah, and uh, Shakmar is obviously fooled by the whole thing. And he comes a-running. Oh! That's what he shouts. <laughs> and what Shakmar does, he plays bloody peek a bloody boo doesn't he, around the corner, which yeah. I really enjoyed. <laughs> he, stood on his, he stood on his hind legs, and he's just peeping around the corner, just like, hoop, 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 hoop. <laughs> and you just think, oh, look at him. A little <laughs> cutie. He does look very cute. He does, doesn't he? Yeah, it just really made me laugh. And then he comes to the mouse to think, what are you fucking doing on a chair? You're supposed to be on a table. And uh, inadvertently steps in the piss. And Sam electrocutes him. Yeah, and he shrieks. He does, yeah. And goes... Like that, you know, like like a baboon would. Sam, he he goes to investigate. Shakmar attacks from behind. He's gone, yes. And he's like, where the fuck is he? I'm stood in my own piss and there's no dead baboon. (laughs) He's attacked from the back. And they have a bit of a wrestle with a puppet. Yeah, it's always nice, always nice. And then uh, they just have a bit of a break, don't they? Yeah. It's like the the bell's gone for the end of round one. They just sort of sit there looking at each other. <laughs> yeah. Mickey turns up, starts dabbing his forehead. <laughs> Shakmar bites him on the shoulder or the neck or both. Yeah, Sam shouts at him. Sham shouts. Uh, Sa- Sham shouts? Yeah, Sean Connery. Yeah, it looks like Sham shouts Shakmar. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, he, he shouts something at him. He just kind of like roars at him, like, Aah! and Shackmar just gets up and just fucks off. <laughs> so like that. Oh, you idiot. And just leaves. When he electrocutes Shackmar, uh, Shunkon is like, shocking. <laughs> Hey, Sham, that's shocking you. Shock Sham, Sh- 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 Shackmar, he's standing in your pish. <laughs> he's like, what? He's like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Say no more. <laughs> now, where's Kimberly with this blowjob? <laughs> <laughs> Sam goes to the lab, he goes to the, the crematorium room, stares at himself in a massive mirror for some reason that's in that room. He he looks he looks like a, a low budget Victor Pascal in this, I mm. thought, after mm. that bit, you know, uh, you know, from the old pet uh, pet cemetery. Yeah. Yeah, it looks look, looks a bit like uh, Pascal. Yeah. But 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 lower quality, obviously. And he drops his own knife. Because he's an idiot. He's staring at himself and drops his own knife. Yeah. Shakmar, however, is following him. Is in pursuit. Hot pursuit. Baboon in pursuit. Officer walks slowly back to the crematorium room because he's trying to lure Shakmar in. He does. I actually quite like the way he does this. The I way do. He gets yeah. Rid of Shakmar. I like it. Because Shakmar sees him standing in the doorway and he runs and lunges at him. It's a slow mo attack, isn't it? Yeah. He is slow mo running at him, which is still terrifying. Mm-hmm. Full speed. You fucking lucky to get out of the way of that. But even in slow mo, it's pretty fucking scary stuff. Yeah. Jumps at him, goes to attack him, and what Sam's done is he's put the mirror up against, like, he's, like, behind the doorway, isn't he? he is, yeah. With the reflection, so Shakmar can see his reflection, and he's smashed through the mirror, Shakmar has, and he's gone straight into the, the creme oven. Well, yeah, the furnace itself. The furnace. <sighs> he shuts the door behind Shakmar, and he sets fire to the baboon. Little tiny hands are on fire. Yes. Those poor little baboon hands in the fire. Hands on fire. <laughs> That's what he sings <laughs> as he leaves. No, he says game's over, which uh, is great. Yeah. Yeah, not quite as good as Paxton, of course, in Aliens, but, uh, <laughs> you know, he tries. And then Sam collapses. He just falls over something. He collapses and then just says, I win. And then dies. And then dies, yeah. Yeah. Not much of a win, is it? Not really. You won't be claiming that as a win. But he is, because he's so obsessed with this fucking game that right to the death he's talking about the game, isn't he? Yeah. All your friends are fucking dead. Everyone you've ever known is dead. Yeah. Including your fucking monkey friend. You've just murdered him. Game. I was playing a game. He's a baboon. The only reason he's attacking is because you injected him in the brain. Yeah, whatever it was. That's the reason. So you've turned your own friend into a fucking murderer. Yeah. He's killed killed all your your other friends. Yeah. (laughs) And then you've killed him. Yeah. For doing it. And you win, dear. And now you're dead. You're one of life's winners. (laughs) You're also dead now. You dick. Yeah. What a victory. Well done, Sam. Yeah. Prick. You're the real villain of this film, Sam. And then we end with a little close-up of the toy monkey. Yeah. Little toy monkey from Shakmar. And Sam laughs in its face. The last act of defiance. <laughs> yeah, and that's it. Credits roll. That's the end of Shakmar. Shakmar. What do you reckon then, Ken? In fact, what I want to know, Ken, is how the fuck did you find this film? Because you showed it me. Uh, I found it because I used to love animal attack films. Mm. And I saw this and I thought, that looks fucking terrifying. The trailer, I thought, this looks fucking scary. I think when I watched it the first time, I thought it was. I really enjoyed it the first time I watched it. Mm. And uh, probably for the second time I watched it as well. I think it was one of those. I said, if you want to watch a good monkey, mad monkey film, this is a good one. Yeah, so I've always enjoyed this film. Watching it now, that game, fucking hell. Yeah. Yeah, wasn't quite sure it was that prevalent. I yeah. thought maybe they mentioned it at the beginning and then just got on with it, but no. There must be easier ways of making a monkey film and, and to set it up that you're locked in a building with a baboon than what they did. Well, yeah, but it was cutting-edge technology back in the <laughs> 90s, wasn't it? <laughs> Maybe that was what Rather it was. A group of doctors and their fucking <laughs> professor play Dungeons and Dragons with with baboons, with baboons and dog shit. Yeah, well, different times, different times. Baboons and dog shit were high up on the list of the uh, writers' tick list, weren't they? They still are for us. Damn right they are. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> got to tick one or both off if, to make a successful film pitch. Yeah, so everybody in that film dies, yeah. except the girlfriend. 
Yeah. Who's not even in the film, really. She's just there. She's the only one who thinks the game's stupid and she lives. Yeah. How about that? How yeah. about that for a revelation? <laughs> yeah, she thinks it's a waste of time and she does not get killed. No. And she was right. It was a massive waste <laughs> of time. <laughs> it's a waste of 90 minutes. No, but I, I still like the film. I still think it's good. And uh, Shakmar itself is fucking frightening. Mm. Yeah. Well, I've been to, you know, you go to the zoo and you see baboons and they are fucking terrifying. They are big old fuckers, aren't they? Yeah. They've got f- the teeth bigger than your dick. Oh, dear. It doesn't mean they're that big, though, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Not necessarily. So there we go. It's another ape film, sort of. Kind of. For April. Yes, yes. Do you see? What did you think to, to Shakmar? You need to let us know. Have we got a film pitch? Yeah, why not? Let's have a fucking go. Go on, then. Let's have a go at one. Hang on a minute. Is this going in the fucking cult, or what? Of course it is, just because of the preposterous plot. Agreed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Agreed, of course it is. Get yeah. in there, yeah. Shakmar. Why wouldn't it be in the fucking cult? Come on, I mean, I enjoy it, but it's pretty bad. Yeah. Yeah, and just because of the game aspect. I think the rest of it would have been good. Yeah. I think it's the fact you, that if... it's doctors pretending they're... Six years old and why don't, well, yeah, keys. Why can't they just be locked in a hospital? Exactly. In, in the, that's it. That's the plot. They are just in a hospital and it's locked. Yeah, it's an animal testing facility. And they're locked in. Yeah, they're locked in due to a power cut. That would have done. Yeah, not Dungeons and Dragons shit. Not because they've cut the power because they're playing a little game. <laughs> <laughs> One guy... This hour, this is an hour and forty one minutes. This film and Gary is playing that game for an hour and thirty minutes <laughs> of the fucking runtime. He does He's not. He doesn't realise he's not playing it until he gets killed. <laughs> Even Sir Bradley was aware that it wasn't a game by the time he got his face ripped off. And he's an idiot. <laughs> Poor old Sir Bradley. He was winning. Who was your favourite character in this? I don't know if I've got one to be honest with you. <laughs> I think it's Shakmar. Shakmar himself. <laughs> Shakmar himself. Shakmar himself, yeah. He's the only one who remained true <laughs> all the way through. <laughs> no character arc, nothing. Just a pissed off baboon. Yeah. Fucking wanting to kill people. Nice one, Shakmar. <laughs> <laughs> we need more Shakmars in our lives. We all do, yes. Don't we? Uh, yeah, go on then, Ken. What's your fucking film pitch? Well, you may remember. <sighs> <laughs> you may remember the. Uh, the incredible tale I told you last time of Viet Cong. Yes. I'm thinking, can we have a Viet Cong origins? Right. Because that twist at the end, where we said it was never explained that in the background of all of these photographs was this massive fucking ape, and he'd been tracking them and somehow followed him to Vietnam. <laughs> and then we do, <laughs> then we, now we do the origins tale. Of who? The ape, the ape or Henry Cavill? Because we already know his origins. Yeah, the ape. And what? Well, go on then. I don't know, that's it. What do you mean? No, you can't fucking <laughs> lay that at my doorstep and fuck off. I can fucking... Or, or we yeah. go Godzilla versus Viet Cong. Right, I, th- thought, th- I thought you were going to go best case Sicario then. No, 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 it's worst case Sicario, as you know. And what happens there is... <laughs> There's a there's a baboon, right, yeah. who's a hitman for the cartel. Right. But the cartel have a weekend off and they're playing a game in a lockdown hotel. And uh, during the game, the baboon goes crazy on tequila and kills uh, all of them. So he kills his own cartel members. And that's the worst case Sicario. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't like it. Oh, for fuck's so, sake. So, Godzilla versus Viet Cong. Yes. Can it not be King Kong versus Viet Cong? That'd be stupid. Ape on monkey? No, oh, they're both apes, oh, aren't they? Oh, nobody wants to see that. <laughs> but, uh, David Attenborough. <laughs> and Roddy McDowell, apparently. Yeah, and uh, Rowdy Roddy. God, okay, who else can fight him? Not just have another bloody Kong. No. Or Mighty Joe Young Ill. And he's in Korea. Like it's his, his last, no, his no, last he's, few he's weeks he's succumbing in, to he's cancer. In, he's in Korea. <laughs> he's a Korean, a giant ape in Korea that they've made. For, oh, for, I get you. Yeah. Made I by thought the you meant Supreme, Ill like he was no, like, no, no, it's no, like Philadelphia, su- but with a monkey. <laughs> the Supreme Leader has created in a lab a massive ape. 
because he wants to do, like take over Vietnam. He already has. Oh, wants, oh, it, wants, oh, a slice, wants a slice of that action. Yeah, so mighty, so he thinks mighty the... Joe Young Il. <laughs> so you think... <laughs> oh, um, so... What's his name? Kim Young Il. Kim Young Il. Kim Young Il. Yeah, I was right then. Yeah, but you think Kim Young Il's plan, the only way I'm going to be able to take over Vietnam is to genetically... <laughs> create an ape yeah. that I could just buy. I don't need to <laughs> genetically create one because they already exist. No, no, it's a big one. It's a big ape. Oh, Massive big. fucking ape. Enormous. Bigger than you. Bigger than you. Fucking hell. Yeah. That's big. at least six foot four. <laughs> <laughs> well, bigger than that as well then. Bloody hell. Even bigger. It's ten feet. That's not that big to, to overthrow a country. <laughs> A ten foot no, eight. no, 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 no. It's ten feet as as a youth, and it grows to thirty feet. That's pretty big. You're taking that victory sip as if you've proven me wrong, <laughs> and that's pretty big, Don. Right, right listeners, isn't thirty feet big? It's I don't not, know what it is in meters. You have to figure it all out yourselves. It's not sixty feet though. Of course, it's not. That's ridiculous. You don't get apes of that size. <laughs> <laughs> Genetically modified or not? Yeah, that's true. It's too big, isn't it? What would you feed it on? (laughs) Other apes, (laughs) cannibalistic apes. Oh, now you're talking. Okay, but what? So we've got we're not having Kong in the title then. You just want to make a film called Cannibalistic Apes? I think so. All right then, we will. Um, Incidentally, when uh, after watching uh, Night of the Bloody Apes, when I used to lend these films to uh, the Sarge, big shout out to the Sarge from back in the day. Um, WWE champion fought uh, Hulk Hogan. <laughs> he wrote... Uh, well, Iranian he, sympathizer, I believe. When I, when I say he wrote, he actually just came up with a film title that he wanted to make. And it was... Um, I think it was Night of the Bloody Cunt Monkeys. Uh, it was a K, you see, on cunt. Why? Uh, otherwise, German. Otherwise it would have meant vagina, and that's disgusting. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, he, so he changed it so we'd get away with the censors. You know, I don't think you would get away with that, to be honest. <laughs> I don't know. It was like back in the nineties, perhaps. Oh, that's I true. I don't know when it was. Probably yeah. the end of nineties, two thousands. I just don't think I can stomach a bloody cunt monkey. So I think we're going to do kind <laughs> of let, let, let alone a night of them. Yeah, exactly. A okay. whole night. All right, fair enough. It was just an idea. So what? What are we doing? Cannibalistic. Can- cannibal apes. It's just called cannibal apes. Well, do you want cannibalistic apes? It seems a bit, you know. Pointless to cannibalistic apes, as in they're also armed. Yes, so they've got ballistically armed weapons. Yes, he's in. Oh no, not he's in. Sorry, I'll save that for when you actually tell your cast. Yeah. So can he? Can he? Yeah. So he yeah. said he set it up in Newcastle. Yeah. Could be cool. Yeah. Can he? Can he ballistic apes? <laughs> can he ballistic apes, man? Can he ballistic apes, man? <laughs> could be. <laughs> Could be a Geordie hybrid with an ape who's gone mental with guns. Yeah. What? Canny ballistic apes man. <laughs> no, all right. Anyway, we're we're going to cut that down because uh, over the pond, they don't know. Yeah. They don't know what a Geordie is. No. Do they? They never watched Bite a Grove Man. No. They never watched any of that. I suspect they don't know either Ant or Deck. Oh, that's a sweeping statement. If, if, over there. Over in America, uh, Canada, of course, Australia. Uh, we get a few listens from there. And all over the world. We've got quite a few uh, recently from Germany, uh, Israel, interestingly enough. We've got, a few, uh, we've got a few out there. So do anybody other than people in the UK know who Ant and or Deck are? Let's find out. We'll, yeah. We'll wait. We'll wait. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, in the meantime... Uh, yeah, so canny ballistic apes. Yeah. Go for it. Right, so. I'm pleased about this because this was my pitch, so I'm pleased that you've taken this on again. <laughs> <laughs> what happens, Ken? Yes. Evil scientist wants oh, to rule the goddamn world. God, those guys. And to do so, they're creating apes. Can- cannibal apes who have also got weapons attached to them. Mm-hmm. I like it. I don't think that they could be stopped. That's world domination right there, surely. Yeah. You can't just stop a, an ape with a weaponry. And what I'd love to do is bring back Nicolas Cage oh, yes. and his sidekick, but I can't remember their names from those like that film pitch. 
Who was this one? Which which sidekick? It was from Sloths, I believe. Oh shit! Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Grember isn't. They had good names. I think he's his sidekick was something like Caribbean Nightfall or something like that. Perry Gibraltar, I believe, was Nicolas Cage's character. Yeah. Am, am I right there? I'm sure his 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 mate's name was something fun. <laughs> Perry Gibraltar and. Tropical Monaco. Tropical Monaco. <laughs> that was his name. It was Tropical Monaco, played by uh, Cuba, Cuba Gooding, Gooding Jr. Jr. Yeah, and then and Perry Gibraltar was yeah was, was Nick Nicolas Cage. Cage. So there we go. So Nick Cage is back as Perry Gibraltar. Oh yes, welcome back. And Cuba Gooding Jr. is back as Tropical Monaco. <laughs> it's a great pairing. Yeah, and they're they're the only people that can solve this. We've got a new female, like I think he was sort of shacked up with the the lead from the female lead from the last one we did, Sloths, but they've separated now. And he's it back. happens, it happens, it's fine. He's back being his own man, him and Tropical Monaco, touring the world, ridding the world of um beasts. <laughs> <laughs> beasts that should not be. Yes. Those those beasts. Not just any beast, of course. He's not an exterminator. No. Okay. Who's his? Uh, so what is he's no female. We've got a new female interest then in doing this film. Yeah, if he's free, she young, she, young, free and uh, able. She's an um, an ape specialist. Oh, I like the sound of her. She sounds sexy. Played by Sigourney Weaver. Oh yes. What's her name? What have we got for her? She is called Frothy Latte. Yes, she could be Frothy Latte. Can she? Yeah, she's in. So yes, yeah, so she's froth froth. The, the frothy latte. It's very easy for you to say that. Yeah, and she's a conservationist who who realizes, my God, these apes are armed. <laughs> she's the first. She's one to pretty know. good at it, then, isn't she? She's the first one to know. She spotted that. She goes out because she lives in the the trees. She's mental. <laughs> <laughs> she did though, didn't she? she when did. she was in the mist. Yeah. Didn't she live with the apes in the mist? She did. So that's what she's doing again. It was that a true story, wasn't it? So, you know, she yeah. can do. She stumbles across, like a um, in the Amazon, she stumbles across a village. and the, Of the damned. And all the apes oh. have been eaten in that village. Fucking hell. Apes and man live in harmony in this village. I was going to say, why are they all doing it in a village? But uh, So all the apes around that village have been eaten, and all the humans have been shot dead. How do we know that the apes have been eaten? Because there's ape, ape corpses oh, with right. big bites taken out of them. Fucking hell. Everyone assumes that the, the humans at the apes went mad and shot, shot themselves. And shot each other. Yeah, but Frothy Latte thinks no. That's not that's not what would ever happen. No, because she, she's a descendant of um, the guy from Night of the Bloody Apes with these incredible leaps of <laughs> <fucking> <laughs> logic. Faith, faith and knowledge. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. And um, she believes that it's actually the work of cannibalistic, ballistic <laughs> apes. Are we putting two ballistics in? <laughs> That's kind of funny, isn't it? <laughs> cannibalistic, ballistic apes. Are we going to? I think so. Okay, they're in. So she calls in the only man that would ever believe her, <laughs> which is Nicholas Cage. <laughs> which is Perry Gibraltar, <laughs> the naive fool. <laughs> and his trusty sidekick, Tropical Monaco. And pilot. And Tro- pilot sidekick. Tro- Tropical Monaco. Yeah. To hunt down these goddamn apes and bring them to justice. Okay. Unfortunately. This is fucking amazing stuff. There's a um, big game hunter wants to capture him, take him to the zoo. Not not like as a guest, like as like, like <laughs> as, as like a, a nice day out. <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> like as an attraction. Like come and look at these apes with guns attached to them. <laughs> That's safe. Is it? Who is it? Roddy McFucking Dowell, <laughs> <laughs> the insane bastard. <laughs> He's dead, so it's got to be Andy McDowell, his, his uh, daughter. Yeah. Okay. Andy McDowell. Yeah. So who's who's she playing? She's playing Professor. What was he called? Sorensen. Sorensen. There you go then. Daughter. Oh, we we keeping her. Yeah. All right. That's the, nice. There's the nice. link. It's nice. Can Nicholas Cage's um, catchphrase be? I don't mean to blow my own dick here, but and then he says something. Okay. Yeah, it's better than my catchphrase. What was that? Potatoes. Anyone. <laughs> <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha!
<laughs> what? <laughs> Potatoes, anyone? <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> what the fuck was that your catchphrase? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> It's just something I thought of then. <laughs> yeah, that's right up there with the best catchphrases <laughs> from sitcoms, isn't it? Like Kramer bursting into the room. <laughs> Can be wild potatoes, anyone? Oh, okay, what did you say? Because that's probably better then. I don't mean to blow my own dick here, but... Okay, well, all right then. But I'm, I'm going to keep that one... Tucked away for the next time. <laughs> <laughs> and also the the uh, the police chief of the Amazon rainforest. <laughs> uh huh. Carl Weathers. Carl Weathers, there he is. I'm putting him in. He's in charge of the rainforest. Make as, sure all the animals stay in line. <laughs> as Amazon police chief, Carl Weathers. Yeah, he's in. He was doing a good job, wasn't he, until this? Well, and then before with the sloths, but... <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 He probably wasn't expecting this, though, was he, in fairness? No. Who's who's in, but was some who's attached? Who's made them cannibals and added the fucking guns out? Was it Andy McDowell in his... In or she just want to capture them? a quest just to make a fun game. In a quest to take apes to the zoo, she wanted to <laughs> arm them first. It's a dangerous place, isn't it? Could it be a twist? And it was Henry Cavill, <laughs> <laughs> who'd went mad in Viet Cong, survived the blast. And then thought they'd, pro- the- they'd be less dangerous if they all had if guns. If they were smaller and they had guns. And ate each other. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Would he make that assumption? I think he wa- he wanted to turn them all into cannibals so they'd all kill each other, but then thought it'd be easier if I armed them. Yeah, then they can kill each other. But the cannibal part stayed. Yeah. So he made them cannibals, but then found out that they couldn't catch it, each yeah, other. It took too long, didn't it? Yeah. It took too long for them to just eat each other. Yeah. So he gave them guns. Yeah. And what Nicolas Cage finds out is that in all these pictures of these cannibal apes, Henry Cavill <laughs> is in, in the, the background. background. <laughs> <laughs> Nodding. Yeah. yeah, with a clipboard. Yeah. Keeping keeping count. Yeah. Keeping a little tally. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's a good one, isn't it? Yeah, and what do you think? Is he the same character? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Of course he is. Gaylord Home Slice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this looks like the work of Gaylord Home. This is what Nicholas. I don't mean to blow my own dick here, but this is the work of Gaylord Home Slice, he says. He's back. He's back in. Henry, welcome back. Yeah, so you got Crazy Henry, as he's known. <laughs> <laughs> Gaylord Home Slice creating them in the first place. Andy McDowell wants to capture them for um, for zoo trips. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> for a nice pleasant day out. Uh, you've got Frothy Latte who's trying to understand them and you know basically, stop. Basically, just talk to them and ask them to stop eating each other and shooting everything. Yeah, and Nicholas Kate and Tropical Monaco Perry Gibraltar are there to um, help her. Bring just, the- just, just get it done. Just get it done. Yeah. And Carl Weathers is overseeing the whole thing. Yeah, he can't believe what's going on. But he also wants to capture um, Perry Gibraltar because he's a fucking maverick, isn't he? He shouldn't be doing what he's doing. Leave it to the professionals. You're not. You're just a fucking idiot with a the <laughs> major flat to play. <laughs> <laughs> you got no jurisdiction here, <laughs> Gibraltar. <laughs> yeah, Gibraltar and Monaco, of course, uh, on the wanted list, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. Uh, superseded though by Home Slice, of course, who's gone top of the tree. Yeah, well, they didn't realise he was there. They thought he died in Vietnam. Didn't we all? Yeah, but he's actually he's in the Amazon. He's like the boys from Brazil. He's been hiding in the Amazon forest after Vietnam. Yeah, because he, he get dropped off on the way back. Yeah, because he killed his whole fucking platoon, if you remember, by blowing them all. Oh up. yeah, he did. Yeah, 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 yeah. We thought him dead too, didn't we? We thought he was dead. Yeah. Him Dead 2 was the sequel, yeah. <laughs> he, uh... <laughs> Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, yeah, he's running for war crimes. So he's he's gone, he's dropped himself off in the Amazon, thinks, I know, I'm going to wipe out all gorillas so it can never happen again. So is is he like on a quest for good? It, he thinks he is, but don't really? they all? Don't all the... Oh, right, okay, but he's just insane now. Yeah. 
Okay, well, I'm glad he has come back because it's kind of a sequel, then, isn't it? He's just like certainly the same gay lord universe. Is this Vietcong that you, you've to... wanted to create for some time? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Is this Vietcong to cannibalistic ballistic apes? <laughs> yes. Yeah, we've done it. We got finally, there eventually. We finally got that into it. And yeah. that photograph bit—that's absolute genius. Well done to Perry Gibraltar for figuring that out. Yeah. He's had to he's a zoom in, hasn't he, on those photographs? Yeah, because he's got them um, with the the string attached to them all. Yeah, he's been they're on the back of Tropical Monaco. Or instead of him being in the background of them all, he's in the foreground of them all. <laughs> he's the he main, can't see the apes. He's the main focus. <laughs> And then in the background, but then that goes back. Some to... apes with guns. <laughs> well, that goes back to your thing of. <laughs> so when we saw him in the first film, we thought the apes were following him, but yeah. it turns out he was following them. And he's the only one that can operate a camera. So <laughs> yeah. that's why he's in the foreground. Wow, anymore. I like that. So in the first one, we assumed that the apes were following. They were sinister, but he was the it one. Was purposefully... him all along. It was him all along. He was taking his misses to the yeah. Amazon. And he's doing selfie with a selfie stick. That's yeah. why he's always in the front. Yeah. And they're always at the back. Yeah. That's what's going on. So he was always doing this. My God. <laughs> this is superb. Gaylord home slice, I should have known. Yeah. And That's... only only Perry Gibraltar, Tropical Monaco, Frothy Latte and Carl Weathers can stop him. <laughs> and he's goddamn dirty apes. What about set piece? Just loads of fucking shooting. Loads of shooting. Um, There's probably a car chase. <laughs> 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 yeah, probably. Yeah, there's a car chase or two. There's an airplane chase. He's got to be a plane chase, hasn't he? Yeah. He's got Tropical Monaco. Be ashamed to let his skills go to waste. Yeah, he's he's trying to fly away from the the apes. Can they fly as well? No. <laughs> he's very successful. <laughs> it shouldn't be easy. <laughs> it's pretty pretty straightforward, to be honest. <laughs> Oh, thank goodness for that. Yeah. That saves filming a long sequence, doesn't it? <laughs> Just watch him fly away with, under no pressure whatsoever. <laughs> Prepare for takeoff. That's the end. <laughs> he does. We've done it. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> all clear. Yeah. Because what we find out is Henry Cow- he, wants to, he wants to blow up all of the apes together. That's his plan. <laughs> Why? Because he's... he's he d- is he sick of apes. it? He's, he's, yeah. he's created so many apes. He, just wants, he wants them all dead now. <laughs> yeah, well, he wanted them originally. That's why he was arming them, so they could all kill ah, themselves. Okay, okay. Well, each other, not themselves. Not suicidal ballistic apes. Can- <laughs> suicidal cannibalistic ca- ca- ballistic ca- apes. Kamikaze cannibalistic ballistic apes. Yeah. It's part three. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, the, that's the trilogy ending. Yes. Well, we'll get to that. <laughs> we'll get to that if we record another one for April. Yeah. If we don't, let's do it now. <laughs> What do you think? I'm fucking liking this. Yeah. We've created our own little ape universe. We have. Nicolas Cage's character's got its own catchphrase. Yes. Tropical He's Monaco. got two to choose from if he wants to use mine. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he will. <laughs> that could be Tropical Monaco's catchphrase. <laughs> Frothy Lattes, like, what are the chances of two heroes with two separate catchphrases? <laughs> and both of them equally useful. <laughs> Exactly. Uh, yeah, so... I think Frothy Latte should probably be killed. Really? Yeah. Fucking hell. Was there a relationship blossoming betwixt the Latte and Gibraltar? No, it was Latte and one of the apes. Oh, yes. Played by Andy Serkis. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's a big fella, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, all eight foot of him. Yeah, that's why she's out there. She's She's, she's settled looking down. for Andy Serkis ape. She's settled down with an ape. And it was him. It was circus. Yeah. yeah, he was a very intelligent ape. They are, though, aren't they? If they're in the circus, <laughs> I put Andy Circus as intelligent ape. <laughs> intelligent cannibalistic ballistic ape. <laughs> Just like he was in the Planet of the Intelligent Ballistic Apes. Yeah. Right. So, so if she's going to die, Andy Circus swears revenge. Yes. That's your part three. And he blames Gibraltar. He blames Gibraltar, Gaylord Home Slice, Monaco, and the Amazon police chief, Carl Weathers. Yeah. The only one unscathed out of all of this is Andy McDowell, who just wanted to go to the zoo. Yes. <laughs> With yeah. some friends. She dies as well. She's dead, is she? Yeah. <laughs> How does she die? 
at the zoo. Yeah, falls into, falls she... into the bear pit. <laughs> That's a shame, isn't it? Yeah. She was looking forward to seeing the bears. <laughs> she was saying that throughout the film. Yeah. She's looking forward to seeing the eagles. <laughs> Yeah, why wouldn't she? <laughs> They're my favourite thing to look at in the zoo. <laughs> the eagle enclosure. <laughs> it's massive, isn't it? <laughs> it's a big old fucking cage over a mountain. She was looking forward to seeing the eagles, the scorpions. <laughs> <laughs> I do a European rock tour from the 80s. <laughs> Oh, that's a shame then that she didn't get to see all that. It's just a shame that she couldn't see Europe before she died. <laughs> that was her ultimate goal. Oh dear. There we go. Is that it then? That's, that, <laughs> that's, that's it then, yeah, part two. <laughs> Nothing that's... happens except people die. <laughs> Nothing happens. Uh, apes kill each other, they eat each other, they shoot humans, humans fight back. Uh Gaylord Home Slice is all, always to blame. A uh, little <laughs> twist there that he was to blame for the first one as well. And uh, that's it. Yeah. And the third one sets up a final showdown between Home Slice, Tropical Monaco, Perry Gibraltar, Carl Weathers, and another yet to be named villain. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's all go, isn't it? It is. Honestly, being this creative really gives you a headache. <laughs> Okay, so you try and talk all of those people into doing this fucking film. <laughs> I'm just going to play them this footage. <laughs> They're fucking guaranteed. And I will say thank you thank for you. listening oh, sorry. <laughs> to the Bad Movie Court podcast. Thank you for listening to this episode. Have you seen Shaq Ma? Shaq Ma! What did you think to it? It's on uh, Prime, by the way. It's on Amazon Prime if you want to watch it. Yeah. Sure, it's over there on fucking Tubi or somewhere like that over as well. Give it a watch. Let us know what you think. Email address by moviecultgmail.com or, or if you can't be asked to email us, and who can, contact us through social media. We're on Twitter or X. We're on Instagram. We're on Facebook. We've got a Facebook group. Ask to join the group and Ken will add you. Threads. Threads, of course, we're on Threads. We're on Good Pods. We're on uh, Letterboxd. Yeah, we're all over the place. Letterboxd, we've got a list, by the way, if you if you are wondering what else we've done and can't be fucked to actually look yourself. Uh, there's a big old list on Letterboxd that tell you what films we've covered. Saves time just telling you. We're literally any, everywhere and anywhere. If you want to contact us, please don't. But if you really want to, <laughs> through social media, thanks very much. Don't just show up at our houses. Thank you. No, not again. And if, you, if you're wondering how to support us, we ask that you leave a rating, review, star rating, thumbs up. Yeah, yeah, uh, mainly that stuff. Yeah. Mon- money, money. We still, send us we still, money. We still ask for money. We're not too proud to ask for money. <laughs> send us some money, please. Yeah, exactly. Please, please. I don't know if this concludes April. It might not. <laughs> well, that'll keep you hanging, doesn't it? Cause we've set up a fucking trilogy now, haven't we? And if we don't do it, what the fuck? Yeah, we wasted everyone's time, including our own, <laughs> as usual. <laughs> I always have to say thank you very much, Kenneth, for joining me in this wild ride through April and oh, April. My goodness me, it has been wild, hasn't it? Like a wild ape. And we'll be back next time with another movie review, deep dive and film pitch right here on the Bad Movie Court podcast. Goodbye. Goodbye, Kenneth. Goodbye. Goodbye. Except if it's Tracy, then I'm going to lick her out.